They think one huge storm came in yeah, 5,000 years ago and it covered it all with sand and the people left because there's no bodies. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in the was eight, 1970 or se uh, 1870s or something, uh, another big storm came and opened it all up. And the Laird, the local Laird there, was uh, smart enough to uh, uh, not to disturb anything. He went and got the uh, uh, historical society, and they eventually they've uh, uncovered it all. So when you go there, the, the Laird of that land, his house is still there, and it goes back to the 1400s. His house does, but the uh, the site is just amazing. You can look it up online too. My pictures that I took when I was there match a lot of the ones that they have on the uh, uh, on the web their website. But it's a fascinating place, beautiful. And that, and again, it just everything was wiped out. It went from you know a whole thriving society to nothing, and there's no history or anything that indicates what was happening there. Yeah, it's pretty cool, isn't it? It's kind of uh, yeah. It's neat that that kind of parallels this this sort of adventure path. Well, what you were North saying Asalonia earlier. Is there. What you were saying earlier about uh, future civilizations there. Remember in high school, we read this book, Technical for the Leibowitz, where these um, future monks uncover these circuit diagrams, apparently written up by by some guy named Leibowitz, who was um, an electrical engineer. And... They had no idea what these things were, but they decided he was some sort of mystic genius. And and these monks spent years and years replicating these uh, electronic circuits, having no idea what they are. It was a good book, actually. That's cool. That's very cool. And we have everybody here now. Yeah, we got a full house. Yeah. Dan's not quite logged in yet to the... Uh to uh, yeah. Fantasy Grounds, but he's online. All right. It's still loading for some reason. It might yeah, take it you a bit. It takes a while. The, um, I downloaded a bunch of new material, too, so it okay. uh, might take a little extra longer. Cool. Um, we got. Oh. I had to account for the, the new city of Magnamar. Nice. <laughs> and uh, I, um, I, I found an adventure that fits in just nicely. Um which will get you guys to the requisite level for the um, next chapter. Yep, for the adventure path tracking. Yeah, um, which is nice. Um, this adventure that I've found is notoriously deadly. So, buyer beware. Nice. You want the experience points? All right. You got to earn them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's actually one of I think probably one of the three or four that has a bad reputation for um, being a party killer. So. Oh, nice. We'll find out where it goes. Um, I've also uh, started looking ahead to the end of this second chapter and a bridge between the second and third chapters that might um, involve a stopover in the city of Corvosa. So we're going to stray a little bit, um, but we've got so many players that and and we're having so much fun i think it's a good idea to um not force anything through and just see organically where this goes that sounds like it's time to kill people <laughs> <laughs> it always sounds like that nas um so you guys are asking um what kind of information you could have found out about the fox gloves using the uh the library of aurori and the basically the knowledge of the people in the town of sandpoint and um, the Sandpoint Records, as well as um, maybe the knowledge of Broder Quink, um, stuff like that. Uh, you also wanted to know about Magnamar. So I can give you a little bit of info on Magnamar. But let's start off with the uh, Aldern Foxglove. So uh, do we have a historian or knowledge nobility? in our group uh, and, uh, I think I got nobility um, history while well, they're both plus one but all right so why don't I get um, you to roll that one and that'll is if anybody has a higher score in that that'll give you a plus two in addition to the um, the plus four for the library and the uh, assistance from the town folk and stuff 
So nobilities plus six total. Okay, so so feel free to add six to that. Let's see what we come up with. Or just two. Oh, add six to my roll. Okay. Yeah, because you're adding four for the yeah. Uh, yeah. Aurori and the town folk, and uh, two for Darcel's little bit of historical knowledge. Oh, oh you, you, you son of a gun. <laughs> All right. This is the bit of information that I was going to be difficult to attain. So we'll start at the easy stuff. And uh, you find out at the very end. But you already sort of know this anyway, so it's not any giveaway. So we've got Foxglove Manor is over 80 years old. And it has been the seat of the Foxglove family the whole time. Some sort of tragedy struck the family a few decades ago. And no one's lived there since common rumor holds that the place is haunted a dc 15 foxglove manor is known as the misgivings by some locals particularly by varicians it certainly has a bad reputation uh, sightings of strange lights in the attic windows muffled sounds of screaming from above and below and even rumors of a huge bat-winged devil living in the caves below the manor are but a few of the tales told about the place the foxglove family lived there as recently as two decades ago but then a fire burned down the servant's building. Serially, Foxglove was found dead, burnt, and dashed on the rocks below the cliffs behind the house, and Traver Foxglove was found in his bedroom, dead by his own hand. The children, including young Eldon Foxglove, were sent away to be raised in Carvosa by distant relations. And we see a lot of those, saw a lot of those events play out over the last several weeks. Um, you guys witness haunts. That revealed a lot of that information already. So this is this is confirmation of what you guys saw and learned. And in case you didn't quite fully understand exactly what those haunts were, it kind of galvanized what you went through. Uh, the DC-20 was Alder and Foxglove recently returned to live in the manor, but he had a hell of a time hiring locals to aid him in the reconstruction and repair of the old building. Until Aldern moved back in, the place was cared for by a man named Rogers Crasby, a retired innkeeper who lost his ear in a bar fight many years ago, uh, who came in three days a week from Sandpoint to air the place out, check for squatters, and make minor repairs. So we all know what happened to Aldern and Rogers. They both uh, turned into ghasts. You don't know... Who turned Aldern into a gas, but we know that Rogers Crasby was turned into a gas by Aldern Foxglove. Um, DC 25, we're getting into the, the, deep, the deep dive now. Uh, Foxglove Manor was built decades ago by Voral Foxglove, a merchant prince from Magnamar. He and his family lived there for 20 years before the entire family perished from disease. The surviving Foxgloves of Magnamar shunned the place for 40 years until Traver Foxglove moved back in. So Voral Foxglove was the original builder of the house and through what you could ascertain from the stained glass windows on the three different levels, um, he kind of charted his path, his ambition to become a lich. And there was also the haunting vision where uh, there was the altercation between him and his wife just as he was about to transfer his essence into his phylactery. Um, and we saw it, you guys saw it go into the wall of the house, and that was the mold that was ever present, which you guys were uh, able to destroy. The deep, deep, deep dive, the hidden information. Uh, I'm not sure where you would get this info from. Well, let's just say that there, uh, you've asked around, and maybe from, um, I'm going to say maybe from the Scarnettis. Which is the local? Um, they're the, yeah, they're the Sandpoint. They're in the ruling council, one of the wealthy families, but they're also the ones that own the the mill, and the other mills have been burning down, and they have kind of like a sort of a bad reputation for being maybe a little underhanded. Um, so maybe um, you get this information from one of them. Uh, the Foxgloves have traditionally been associated with the Brothers of the Seven, a secretive gentleman's club bank based in Magnamar and consisting of merchants or thieves, depending on whom you talk to. Members of the society prepare, periodically visited Foxglove Manor at night during the years the manor went unlived in, perhaps to check up on the building and make minor repairs, or perhaps for more sinister pursuits. 
Um, Rampa, at some point, had contracted a rather fast-moving and virulent disease. Um, and it was linked to the the mold and the walls and the the tainted spirit of Voral Foxglove. He was able to shake it off with the assistance of uh, Darcel and uh, Mimsif. Um, so you're not sure what the connection is with that, but there was um, these brothers of the Seven had been visiting the manor over the years. Hmm. All right, so that's they weren't making they weren't making anything in their cellar, were there? They weren't like making uh, vials, disease vials, or anything like that. There was the cage with the. The one that was empty, and then the, the two rats. other cage with the rats with the disease. Does it look like they were trying to create a disease? You're not 100%. Uh, it looked like it was possible that the rats were being experimented upon. Okay. Alrighty, something to consider. The... Um, the other information about Magnamar, what what were you guys going to look into there? Just the Thessalonian uh, connection? Yep. Okay, well, so... That, that's what my idea was, anyway. So the the one main thing... Um, is that the, the story uh, goes that uh, Curvosa was founded about 300 years ago by uh, founders... See if I can bring up a map of Varicia. See if I have a map of Varicia. This will give you guys a good overview of uh, the campaign. All right, let's see here. Map Varicia. Let me send this out to y'all. And then you can see where everything is. Are we on a map? Uh, no. Right now, you guys are in town, in the town of Sandpoint, uh, kind of collecting yourselves and um, gathering yourself after a pretty harrowing adventure in a haunted house uh, not far away. So now you're gathering information for the next portion of your journey, which you think at this point leads to the the metropolis of uh, Magnamar. So we'll get back to a little bit of history here. Um, oh, on this map, Corvosa isn't shown. Okay, so let me see if I can bring up one with Corvosa on it. There we go. Let's try this one instead. No, that's not right. shows the whole thing. Yeah, it doesn't show Corvosa. No. No, it, it shows the area that we were in, though. Our yeah, it does show the area that you're board. in. With some, there's Sandpoint, yeah, and Magnamar. Okay. It doesn't go further east. doesn't show you Varicia. Okay, so let's try one more here. I think this might be it. Here we go. Here we go. Much better. I found it. Okay, so Incoming. Corvosa. So up up until like 300 years ago, this entire area, all of this that you see on the map was a wilderness. Um, the local uh, indigenous people, the Shawanti, and then they had a, a wandering group of, I guess, analogous to... Uh, Earth's history, the Roma people, um, like the gypsies. I don't know if that's a slang term. If it is, if it is I apologize. Uh, but you get the idea. The um, They're a nomadic uh, people. They would travel these lands and interact with the um, indigenous people, the Shawanti, who are analogous to our uh, North American native Indians. Um the way that they're described and there's a bunch of tribes and stuff like that so they all lived here 
and General Harmony, and then the Chalaxians came from the south through and south and east through Bloodsworn Vale, and they founded the city of Corvosa. And Corvosa is over here on the map. And Corvosa is um, when the settlers. Oh, just got booted out. Oh, did you? Yeah, in here. Yeah. Uh oh, not this again. <laughs> oh, now it's a check for updates, too. I did I'm do still that. in. But yeah. Why, why, why are you breaking? Good. Yeah, no, I, I got completely booted out. It's got you guys yeah. disconnecting too. Did I lose my connection? It says it's good. So I appear to still be in, but that doesn't mean it's yeah, you're, you're yeah. still up because now I'm, at, I'm I'm loading right now. So okay. the main one's still up. I don't know why I got kicked out, but anyway, I'll, as we're as we're reloading and stuff like that, I'll give you the little sure. I'll give you the 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 Coles notes of the for the Americans the Cliff notes. On the history, so Corvosa, um, they they found this uh, area on a Thessalonian artifact. They think uh, called the Grand Mastaba, which is like a, almost like a, a flat top pyramid, and the Shawanti were guarding it uh, against some sort of evil. And the Chalaxians wanted to settle in the area, so a big war broke out. And uh, over the next X amount of years, um, and a lot of bloodshed between the local Shawanti tribe and the somewhat um, imperialistic Chiliaxians, um, a city was finally formed. Now, at that time, Chiliax wasn't known for its devil worship. They were mostly the good guys. They, um, the god Eridan, whose death ushered in this whole age that we have right now, the age of lost omens. Um, he was the patron deity of Cheliax and also of Absalom, basically of humanity. He was quote unquote the last Aslanti. Um, a Aslanti um, human survivor from the Aslanti Empire, which was even before the Thessalonian Empire, who uh, attained godhood by raising the Star Stone, which was um, said to be in the um, vicinity of the city of Absalom. So anyway, we've got... The air quote good guys, the Chiliaxians, fighting with the uh, local Shawante, and they do some, there's some dirty business. But basically, they drive the Shawante out and then they far, f form the city of Curvosa. So we get to the age of lost omens now. Eridan has died. Curvosa is a thriving city, um, still connected with uh, Chiliax. And then Cheliax turns to um, the people who take over Cheliax. Uh, one of the noble houses turns to devil binding to cement their power. The Corvosans um, kind of break off from that a little bit. Uh, they maintain some of the... Um, not rituals, but some of the... hard to say um some of some of the same features that they held before but basically they become independent from Chaliax. but a group of that a group of them finds that it's not good enough and they travel to magnamar so they travel across uh, conqueror's bay to the other end and they find another air quote thassalonian monument called the iron span and this is like um uh, 300 foot tall bridge that is about 200 feet wide that goes out into the Varician Gulf um, several hundred feet before it appears that it had fall, fallen into the Gulf. Um, so there's a whole bunch of other, um, there's a couple other monuments there. 
and the local Shawanti there and the v local Varisians uh, let them know that this is an area where the Imperial Lords had um, had held sway and their, their blessings on the land. So instead of fighting with the locals, the Magnamarians came to an agreement with the locals. There's um, there's two sections to the city. There's an upper city and a lower city. And then there's an area outside of that that they left as sacred ground for the Shawanti and the Varisians. And they have like, um, they've included the Shawanti and the Varisians in their governance. And since that time, a bunch of monuments uh, based on the founding of Magdamar were also built. Like there's a legend that um, the heroes who founded Magdamar fought this giant sea serpent. So there's a big monument to that. Um, there's a monument to where they first found evidence or they first saw evidence of the Imperial Lords who saved them from a, a storm that threatened to wipe out the first settlers, that kind of stuff. So there's a whole bunch of um, little monuments to all these historical events. And Magnamar is known as the city of monuments. I think there's like eight or ten. Um, and they, there's some some thought that um, some of the monuments, the Imperial Lords that look over them or the spirits of the founders, uh, if you placate them in such a way you can get yourself a little boon for the day so um i believe we'll get into rampa learns about um i believe it's called the worm watch where if you practice at sword play or weaponry in front of the monument for 10 minutes and um you succeed at some sort of check um, you can get yourself an attack bonus for the for the day, but it's all in um, like not game terms. Like you, they'll say like if you uh, if you suitably impress the monument with your um, skill at arms, you'll be blessed by the spirits for a day. And all the monuments have something like that attached to them. Um, there is a bunch of ruling families in. Magnamar, I won't get into all of them. There's a whole bunch. Uh, the Kaijutsus are... I was about are... to ask, is there a Cliff Notes package? Because my brain just went flatline. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot <laughs> it's, it's a lot there. It's a, it's a lot of information that I'm going, I wasn't taking notes. No, wow. exactly. <laughs> so you're not going to need to know all this stuff. But just, just give you a rough idea of... Uh, I'm not even... 100% sure if what I told you is exactly true or not. It's just like, that's what I remember of it. Um, so there's like a whole bunch of ruling families. Uh, the Kaijutsus, who Amaiko, the innkeeper. Um, they're a very minor noble family in Magnamar. The Foxgloves, also a very minor noble family in Magnamar. Um, the Scarnettis, on the other hand, are um, <coughs> more prominent uh, the Deverins, uh, Mayor Kendra Deverin, her family, is a little more prominent than the Kaijutsus. But there's four or five like really prominent uh, Magdamaran families. I think there's like seven. And they have like a House of Lords, which is um, essentially the center of their government. Uh, but the, the town itself is ruled over by a Lord Mayor. Uh, I think the only person who would know of the Lord Mayor would be um, Alandril. Uh, he's a corpulently uh, hefty dude. Um, he's got a reputation for being um, a bit of a glutton. Did we talk about how we arrived or... Have we left yet? Um, you guys can arrive whenever you want to arrive. Where it's going to take a couple days from when you set out. I'm going to say that all this digging around and stuff like that takes up takes you some time. Is there anything else that you want to do before you you basically put sandpoint in your rearview mirror for a little bit of time? Assuming you do want to put sandpoint in your rearview mirror for a little bit of time and explore. I'm just tired. No, I exactly. I, mystery solved. It was Alden Fox Club done. <laughs> or something like that. Uh, 
Well, Amika asked us to take these papers and register to file them for her, so we'll do all that. That was when she, she was assuming, or she thought you guys were going to uh, Magnamar. Yeah. If that's so still the case, then. Yeah. You'll save her a trip. She doesn't want to leave the rusty dragon unattended. Yeah, no, we'll do that for her. It'll get us into the elite section as well, so that's good. Yeah, she's also giving you the keys to her um, Kaijitsu Manor or Villa. She tells you that is that is in the um, Naos uh, district. It's um, she tells you that the city of Magnamar. There's an upper city and a lower city, and it's divided by a 300 foot escarpment. Um, have you ever been to Hamilton, uh, Tim or Randy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. On so one way streets. Yeah, so you know the uh, the escarpment that we have in the background. I don't know if you. Yep. Yeah, it's it's very, very similar to that. Okay. So they have like an, an upper city and a lower city, and she describes the um, the kaijutsu villa as right on the edge of the upper city, um, in the western portion of the Naus district. So Alan Drill, uh, knowing the city fairly well. Uh, knows that the kaijitsu villa um at first you think like okay it's a noble villa this is going to be extremely opulent but alan drill knows that the kaijitsu villa is a little run down it's um it doesn't hasn't seen a lot of use over the years and it's fallen into a little bit a state of disrepair it's not like completely um abandoned and derelict or anything like that but they could use a little bit of work and uh, him and his former comrade um, the gentleman who was who met his unfortunate end perhaps at the hand of Aldern Foxglove or somebody associated with him um, you guys you, th you had initially at some point considered robbing the Kaijitsu Villa, uh, but decided it probably wasn't worth the, uh, the potential risk. If it's run down, what could they possibly have in there that was worth stealing, right? Um, but it was a fairly, um, fairly inviting target because you didn't think there, there was anybody there. It's a noble villa, uh, but. Um, Amiko's giving you the keys, and as far as she knows, it's still habitable. She says she pays a, a lady named Elvara uh, to go in every week and clean up and make sure there's no squatters in there or anything like that. So should be in decent shape. It's just it could use a little TLC uh, on the outside. could probably use some work. She's eventually going to see to it. Um, but her father had like just kind of let it go. So with all the stuff that's going on, she hasn't really had time to attend to it. We also had interest of visiting the Foxglove Villa in the yep. inside. We know it's in that area. Townhouse or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, is there anywhere else in town that we've gotten clues to go visit as part of like the book's quest or whatever? I don't think so. Uh, Amiko tells you that she doesn't know where Foxglove's Villa was in uh, Magnamar. It was kind of like just always like an afterthought that um, Foxglove Manor, uh, the misgivings, was out there. That, And then Aldern Foxglove would show up in town every once in a while. It wasn't really well known that they were... They knew he was like a noble, but they didn't really know like how they became nobles and stuff like that. That's a DC-30 knowledge history check to get to the roots of the family and stuff, so... Um, okay. she's not sure know when you read that she's not sure when the um, where where Foxglove's manor is in um, Magnamar but she's she's sure that if you asked around you could find it I don't think you guys had anywhere else that was the big the big clue is the um, the note from uh, Zanisha, mistress of the seven, 
well, then, you, then you're hearing another, there. yeah, Brothers of the Seven and stuff like that. So we could get there and then do some research on the Brothers of the Seven. Maybe, maybe there's more to it in the Fox Twelve townhouse. y'all hear that did that kind yes of... yeah yep. gotcha good. all right so do you want to you guys just snap my fingers and we're magnamar i'm assuming we're traveling by land we're taking our horses are we taking them on the boats uh you've got about a two-day trek on horseback uh okay. if you still have the regular map uh the varicia map up I can send that out again. It is. So we're not far from there. Oh, or where are we right right now? Please. So we that, were at Fox Club Manor, right? Which is yeah. Manor. So Fox Club Manor would have been somewhere out there. Okay. No, no. Fox Club Manor would have been. Oh, geez, I'm trying to move this. Uh, it was out here somewhere. Oh, no, it was it was probably. Uh, let's see. I was going to ping it. I can't ping. I know. I'm trying to. I'm trying to move a square. It's probably it about was, where the O is, right? In the, the lost code. It it's probably south it's, and east it's, standpoint. It's probably where the T is in lost. Just off that little promontory where the lost coast. See that the T in lost. The misgivings was probably okay. right, uh, right there-ish. So somewhere between Sandpoint and um, and Magnamar, yeah, okay. absolutely. And Magnamar. Okay. All right. So are we headed for Magnamar, or where are we going? Yeah, Magnamar. Magnamar. <clears throat> yeah. So it's it's like a day and a half. By the time, let's see here. That's 100 miles, so that is, that's about 100 miles, so actually probably about 75, so I would say about a day and a half of horseback and stuff like that, um, you guys can make decent time. Um, Did you read what I sent you? I read some stuff. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. Yeah, this is, uh, this is like a high fantasy world with a, anywhere it's... Uh, pretty much every given tavern is like the um, the cantina in Star Wars. It's just normal. So I can find friends. Yay. Yep, absolutely. And uh, you won't get any hassle about uh, Tinder or uh, people aren't going to ask you about Gordon Gecko or anything like that. You're, just, you're good. So you can Magnum. Tinder wants people to ask him about Yeah, he wants, he needs his subjects. So the city of Magnamar, let's see here, is right here. So I'll give you a little brief. Um, so at the very top along the, the Lost Coast Road, uh, you enter into the gates. Um, the H is th for the heroes of Sandpoint. And I'll go over any monuments that you might see. So to the left is uh, like a large theater called the Triodia, which is a famed Magnamarian opera house. Uh, to the right uh, of this large square, and this large square is... Um, it's kind of like um, like an Italian, like an, a big, large square in Italy where they have like um, a bunch of houses surrounding the outside of it. But in the middle, they got people gathering and uh, little little markets and stuff like that. Um, little monuments here and there. Nothing of the major monuments that you've um, you've heard about or anything like that. But to the to the right, um, that large building to the basically north of the H it's called that's the house of Lords. So that's the, um, one of the seats of government. And, uh, Alan drill knows for a fact that, uh, if you follow this road down through Naus, um, 
through a bunch of shops and like this is a this is a pretty expensive district that you guys are walking through and there's no um there was no charge for coming in the gates or anything like that the guards don't question you or anything like that you don't have the hero's standpoint you don't have to you know you don't have to secure your weapons or anything it's nothing it's this is nothing that they haven't seen before a million times so if you go all the way down Naus, uh, the border of Naus, um, come to another uh, square in a large street. Um, Alandro points you out to one of the monuments called um, the Guardians, and you can see the gate to your left now. Uh, that's this gate over here where there's um, two forks, two entries. This is a... Um, well, oh, I clicked the wrong thing. Uh, just within the Twins Gate stand the Guardians, one of the city's larger monuments. These 200-foot-tall colossi depicting the young heroes Kalen and Romer Vanderail uh, face each other with burning staves held high, forming a giant arch. And um, we'll say that um, for the low, low price of a gold piece, one of your tour guides comes up and says, if you meditate here for 10 minutes below the arch and make a successful DT-15 knowledge arcana check, you can gain a plus one morale bonus on all concentration checks for 24 hours. Nice. If anybody wants to try that, they can do that. That's one of the monuments. There's another one called the Founder's Flame. Uh, it's a magical fountain. And um, did you pass? It's a DC-15, right? It's a 17, I rolled. It's a spellcraft check you need. Or no, that's the wrong monument. Pardon me. That's the Founder's Flame. I was like, you said, you said a Knowledge Arcana. That's yeah, Knowledge Arcana, Arcana. yeah. Yep, yep. Oh, I thought you said Concentration. Knowledge, knowledge Arcana. Knowledge Arcana. Okay. Yep, so then, uh, yes. So you guys stop for a bit and take a break. A couple people start meditating. I rolled in 11. All right. So if you have to make a concentration check today, give yourself a plus one. Cool. Can't hurt, right? Yeah, can't hurt. All right. Look at that. They're also rocking it. Well, they're meditating. I'm just looking around and seeing where we would need to go to do the paperwork that, that you, we've been you can see it is You can see it from the Lost Coast Road before you even enter the city. It's called the Arvinsor. Um, the Arvinsor comes accompanied with a pitcher. It is the tallest structure in Magnamar and a wonder of arch wonder in a city of architectural feats. So this is probably the one of the two or three most impressive um, architect or architect or areas of interest. It's approximately four hundred feet tall. Um, so it's three hundred feet down the the um, escarpment cleft but it rises 100 feet above the city uh, it's where a lot of the um, the military and the police force and the guards and stuff like that a lot of the city offices are held there you can access it from the um, from the upper part of the city and also from the bottom part of the city so it's not far from where you guys are now it is uh, right over here you can get in the city there too. Get in the city. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so the other monument was the Founder's Flame, which is um, is um, a guide will tell you that you can uh, meditate for ten minutes before the flame and make a successful DC fifteen spell check, spellcraft check to gain a plus one to increase the save DCs of all fire spells you cast in the next twenty four hours. So maybe Ratatouille wants to do that one, as opposed to those suckers doing the concentration check. <laughs> oh boy, I came back to the computer for that. <laughs> so you also notice that there's a temple of Iomade uh, right in that little square too. Um, you don't think that there's a temple of Saranre in um, Magnamar. Heathens. God, this one. Oh, oh look at that. Man. Ratatouille. He only needed one more, man. Oh my God. All right. Too late to give you guidance, unfortunately. So there's, so say you guys are over here doing your thing. Uh, you can see the Arvisor clearly uh, from there. 
you can go there first. Uh, you can also, um, Alindra points you out, it says if you just follow this road down here, Kajitsu Villa is right over here. So it's not far. I don't know if you guys want to. Um, it's it's mid-afternoon, say 2 in the, two in the afternoon. You guys want to stow your horses or uh, get cleaned up or check the place out or whatever and then go to the Arvinsor or go to the Arvinsor first or do whatever you want to do. Um, I think we get ourselves settled first and we don't have to carry our equipment and our horses around. Okay. So if you get to here, um, Alan Joel will point out that the Cathedral of Abadar Another one of the major churches is right there. Uh, you guys will go down this way here to the... Then you follow the gates along to Kajitsu Villa, which also comes with a handy-dandy map. Thank you, Dungeon Master. <laughs> Hey, another map. Nice. Hey. So this is this is the villa part that's inside a walled compound. So the so beyond that, there's also like a walled portion, like kind of like the, the grounds, and the grass is um, the grass is long and and unshorn. Uh, the trees look a little um, little wild. There's a uh, little little bit little bits of wildlife kind of taken over here. Uh, you get to the the walls of the actual villa itself, and it's got an open courtyard. Uh, the gate's locked. Uh, the key fits works the gate. Uh, if you want to let's see here, no. Um, I'll throw you all on there. It doesn't really matter. We're not going to have any fights or anything like that. Feel free to explore the villa. Um, there's a big stable. There's a pool with um, uh, fish that are swimming around. Uh, you don't know who comes and feeds them or if anybody feeds them. Or what. It's a sizable pond. It's uh, 15 feet by 30 feet. Um, these uh, shrubberies are now like... 15 feet tall they go almost up to the to the roof line and they're um it's amazing that they've kept their their shape uh but they're they're in dire need of uh, some work so you get to the you stow your horses uh, get to the front door the key works for all the different doors there's uh, doors to the north and south and then there's the grand double doors that enter um you guys can get yourself a room. There's tons of rooms. There's a bunch of rooms for servants. They haven't been used in ages. Um, you might have to buy yourself some supplies for kitchen stuff, or you can go eat at taverns, which you've seen a bunch of along the way, uh, eateries and taverns and restaurants, that kind of stuff. Uh, but it does not appear that the lady, Elvara, who Amiko has been... Uh, claims that, yeah. yeah, she hasn't been here in, uh, you don't know how long the dust is. It's, um, it's almost like lint trap thick, like lint trap on your dryer after you've done a particularly yep. fluffy load of track pants. That's how thick the dust is on pretty much everything. So, mm -hmm. okay. Has anybody else been here? Uh, do a little tracking, look around. Yeah, you can do tracking, look around. Absolutely. It, it appears like every once in a while uh, there's a set of footprints here and there and they go from room to room looking for anything that might be valuable. But there isn't anything in here that's of any value whatsoever. Yeah, you can find the hints that every once in a while there has been somebody who's kind of made their way through the place and closed. It doesn't look like anybody's broken in though, right? No, the, the windows aren't damaged. Um... The door doesn't. It looks like it was jimmied open a couple times, so you're not 100 percent sure how good that lock is going to be. Uh, but it still closes on its own. It, the lock. Can we tell how long ago the last time somebody came through? Uh, it's probably been a while. Okay. So there's nothing out. It looks like they may have rifled through some stuff at some point, but there's nothing of value that's out 
and nothing in the cupboards or anything like that. No, it doesn't no. seem like any any of the food stuff that might have been there has long since gone bad. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't look like there's anybody been living there for quite possibly 15, 20 years. On the food stuff, it, it, does it look like it's within the last couple of months or does it look like it's so ancient it's like... Yeah, it's uh, yes. fossilized now. Okay. So nobody's been living here at all. I wonder if the lady's still been paying this so-called maid. Yeah. She's making a living for doing nothing. It's great. Yeah. Amiko's been paying her um, monthly to come in and <laughs> clean up like two, three times a week. Or at least once a week. Well, we can see the effect of it. It's really good. <laughs> so if you want, you can drag this map down into your, your hot bar. This map might come up again. Okay. Post a guard for no reason. So we'll say an hour or so goes oh, by. The maid she's paying is still with us. Yeah, exactly. How would you even find out? Uh, okay. How do I get it down again there? Uh, you take the uh, piezo symbol in the top oh, left and corner. Move it down. Yeah, 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 just drag it down into the hot bar. I got it. There you go. Okay. I thought that might be it, but I thought before he buggered us up and get picked out again, I'd ask. For no right. reason <laughs> whatsoever, I've well, also well. gotten a um, floor pan of the roof. So just there it is. Love it. That's what it looks like for no reason at all. All right. Another map. <laughs> and um, in case you wanted to know what the roof situation was. So <laughs> it's been reshingled recently. So I'll no, say. it's um they are the clay um clay tile roofs. Um, they look like they're probably about six months away from probably need to, needing to be completely replaced. Yeah, a little evidence of some water damage in some of the rooms through the plaster um, nothing major yet there's the hint that there's a couple animals um, who've made yeah. their way in raccoons okay, so there are holes in the roof yeah okay. it's nothing um, nothing serious yet but uh, nothing it, man size just small animals yeah if it isn't okay. attended um, yep so uh, basically Mako's got herself a couple thousand gold pieces worth of repairs to make and um, some um, some landscaping and stuff to do, and she needs to get the place all fixed up. Um, I can help with the landscaping. Is there is there messengers that go back and forth between here, Magnamar and Sandpoint? Is there any kind of uh, message service, mail uh, service? Imagine there's probably like a, like a merchants league. The, the merchants travel around. I would imagine. Um, okay. Well, if we write up all the things we found in the fact that she's going to need somebody to repair the roof, uh, some major cleaning to be done, the place needs to be trimmed. If we sent that all out to her. Um, we would do that, and then she can figure out what she, whether she wants to pay for it. Okay. Sure. Nims, do you have animal messenger? Hmm. I can look. I think you might. I do. So that would be a fun way to receive a message, right? The sparrow, no. squirrel, you know, yeah. <laughs> Last week we decided that if um, you had some slots unused, unused and you wanted to spend like a full hour of preparation, the same amount of time that it would take you to prep prepare for the day, you can change a spell. If you have like, a, say it's a second level spell. And you haven't mm -hmm. used up all your second level spells. If you wanted to spend a whole hour, you could uh, prepare that spell. Okay. Um, I also have a tree shape so I can help with the uh, bushes. Or Great. wood shape, rather. But yeah. All right. Excellent. We've got a new groundskeeper at the Kaijutsu Villa. She's already got a jab. <laughs> I mean, I got to feed tender. <laughs> all right. 
So uh, a little bit of time goes by. We'll call it three in the afternoon. Uh, what would you like to do? Your first steps. We probably need to get food. Uh, nobody seems to care that you walk around uh, armed and shielded and everything, right? Nope. Okay. In fact, there's quite a few people armed and shielded. Uh, do people have bodyguards? Yes, they have bodyguards. You've also seen uh, town guard in um, in pairs, in squads of six and eight. Uh, you've seen them coming and going quite frequently from the Arvinsor. Um, there seems to be a fairly sizable and active uh, police, watch force, and army. How long do we plan to be here? You don't know. Probably a couple days worth anyway. <clears throat> well, we should probably get some food. Yep, we should get some food. We should also go to the Avatar and uh, tell them that we're uh, legally in that residence. The Kajitsu's house. We don't want to suddenly have armed guards show up and ask us what we're doing. Is that garden out front just flowers or is it birds and veggies? <clears throat> uh, it's just flowers. It's decorative. It was decorative. Now it's Oh, it's uh, an exercise in Darwinism. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I just was thinking if we were going to be here longer, that I could turn one of these hedges spots into a garden. Do you agree okay. to Depends feed? Depends on how long we're going to be here. Yeah, it'll be here probably a while. Um, but maybe not like raised potatoes while. <laughs> <laughs> Well, at least I up know. to investigate the clues we know, and we may discover more while we're here. Yep. Is this a pool? It is a pond. A coral it pond. Fish. It's fish. It's about six feet deep. Oh, it still has fish in it. It still oh, has fish in it. If you <laughs> if you scroll way in, you can still see the fish swimming in there. Some of them have got to be quite a size. What are they eating? <laughs> People. Probably each Dead other bodies, and the yeah. algae. Yeah, and uh, whatever um, insects have congregated. And there's a whole little ecosystem going on there. There's frogs and maybe a turtle. You never know where these things come from. They tend to find places like this. Well, I think we should uh, report in so that we're legally in this house. And the, and the uh, guard knows that. And then I think we should uh, wander up on the other end and see what the uh, Fox Club Manor looks like. Kind of scout it out. I'm good with both. All right. So everybody going together or are you going to split the party? Yeah, I'm going together. Ah, you pussies. <laughs> 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 All right. Arvin Sore first? Yep. Yes. All right. Kind of makes yourselves legal. We don't want to come back and find that we're, we've been turfed. All right. Lock the doors. Yeah, yeah, lock the doors on the way out. All right. So you have you have a key. Uh, you also have all the foxglove keys. Um, you can get uh, copies of the Kaijutsu Manor key made up. Um, Amiko gave you permission to do that if you wanted to. Um, you probably saw a locksmith at some point on your walk down whatever that street's you, called. Um, when you said the lock was jimmied, was it at the front door or was it at the side? Front door, yeah. Window? Front door. It uh, looks like it was maybe pried open. Um, does it look like they uh, picked the lock? Uh, no, it looked like they used a um, crowbar and, just, a crowbar and just popped it open. But it closed it back up after they were done. So, uh, so it closes normally. It's not the, yeah, it uh, closes, the side isn't broken. Yeah, it's closed normally. There's a little bit of damage okay. to the wood. <clears throat> the Arvinsor, I will, like I say, that it comes with a pitcher. I don't believe I've showed you. So imagine, if you will, a precipitous 300-foot drop down a um, escarpment 300 feet to the bottom, and then a tower rising another 100 feet on top of that that goes all the way to the bottom of um, the cleft. That's and then, the, then there's a, a bridge 
from the upper portion that's probably 50 or 60 feet wide that goes that spans uh, a short bit of the gulf maybe about 50 feet to the actual Arvinsor and people are coming and going this place is um, it's got like a, a big arched opening at the end of the bridge on the other side uh, that le- leads into the t- the actual tower and it looks like um, in times of trouble they can pull down a gate and um, like maybe drop a portcullis and stuff like that so it's not wide open. It's also a defensive fortification. You can see barbicons and parapets and yep. uh, those other fancy words that I'm not sure what they mean. Um, it's got it all. It's a big place. There's people coming and going, and they're not paying you any mind whatsoever. I hope what they we need is on the ground floor. I hate to have to climb 300 feet. <laughs> Maybe they have an elevator. <laughs> That'd be neat. You put a teleport system in your tower. Oh, Walk look. in, tell what floor you wanted, and send you right there. No such luck. <laughs> All right, so you, you guys get in, and then there is um, there's a light, wide open space, and you can see a couple offices, and you can see maybe a, a desk in the middle, like an information kind of desk. You yep. can also see. Um, Multiple sets of stairs going up and down. Oh, head for the information. Okay, so there's, so there's a young man there. He's bespectacled. Uh, he's wearing a set of uh, blackened studded leather armor. Um, but it looks like it's almost unbroken in. It looks like it's just uncomfortable for him to sit in it, but he has to sit in it because it's his uniform. And... Um, <laughs> He doesn't even look up at you, and he's writing away. He's. Uh, excuse me. No look um, up. No look up. He's still writing. <clears throat> he just throws up one finger for you to hang on. <clears throat> he can tell by your axe. Roll to see if Tender doesn't nibble on the finger. <laughs> I don't know. You, you <laughs> tell me. He throws you up. Throws up the finger without even looking at you. He's still writing. And he can, he, he knows you, you're strangers. He can just tell. He's been through this a million times. Tinder goes and sits on the edge of his desk and looks at him. Okay. Now make an intimidate check for Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> you will bow before me, foolish mortal. <laughs> yeah, no. <nope. laughs> <laughs> might scare him though. He barely gives Tinder any mind. It's like the uh, the gecko from the Geico commercials. He just like, okay, yeah, that's cute. And um, he finishes writing and he puts his quill down <clears throat> and he says, "Yes, what can I help you with?" Where do we register for uh, uh, renting out or uh, occupying a, uh, a house in the city? With the owner's permission, so the guard doesn't come by and try and throw us out. Well, uh, you first have to secure that permission. We have the owner's permission. What we need to do is make sure it's registered. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, and where would this be? Hey, do you know the Kijitsu menu manner? Oh, that derelict. Uh, yes, that that place. Yes, you're staying at at the. Uh, at the forbearance of the Kaijitsus. Are you from Sandpoint? Oh, we are. We've just come from there, yes. Well, welcome to our fair city. Uh, you, uh, Lanjitsu hasn't been to town for quite some time. Are you representatives of his? Uh, no, his daughter. He won't be coming for a long, longer time now. His daughter, I see. Okay. So I imagine you've got uh, paperwork. He, uh, yeah, we do. Okay. Mm-hmm. And she's got the, you guys have the scroll, the permission and stuff like that. And you also have the other scroll, the paperwork that she wants, um, air quotes, filed. Yep. Okay. So he looks it over and it's got the stamp on it and everything. And he uh, he says, okay, one moment. I just have to compare this uh, with our notes. I'll probably about be about 10 minutes. I have to, uh, I have to go to the file room. I'll be back. 
Uh, perception? I want to know if he's telling me the truth. Okay. Yeah, he seems kind of put out that he's got to go and compare this um, seal that he doesn't see every day to uh, a seal that they have on record for the kaijutsus. Seems legit. <laughs> so he's like... Oh. So as you guys are standing there and waiting, he, he leaves and he goes into... Um, into an office that looks like it might go other places, like just the way that it's set, and you can see like the uh, the beginning of like a private staircase that might exit from it, going up to a different floor. Um, All right, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna move along so I, I can keep an eye on that alternate staircase. I want to know if he goes up. It's uh it's enclosed. <clears throat> All right, but it comes out somewhere. Oh, yeah, on a different see where it comes up? on a different floor. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll climb one set of floor, floors up and see if it comes out there. It looks like it goes up a couple floors. It looks like it keeps going up and up. But there's also other rooms that it, it might attach into. Yep. Yeah. All right. I'll come back down. Uh, anybody else want to do anything? Just trying out my new armor. Yeah, you got you're up and down, and this is uh, you would think that being a military base, that this would be locked down, but it's not. It's it's half public buildings, half um, it'd be like almost going to a police um, police station downtown. You get the front desk, and you can kind of wander around a little bit. But um, is there like small children around or anything? I would imagine there is with their parents, maybe waiting for something or. Pender's looking for somebody to preen over him, so he's like, he, he tries to find somebody that goes, oh, dragon, and he goes, yes. Oh, okay. Sure. I thought you could say he's, he's looking like, for someone affection. to eat. <laughs> no, he uh, yeah. probably grabbed a koi out of the pocket. <laughs> yeah, so that can go on. Uh, anybody else want to do anything? Alexis uh, would wait patiently. Okay. Here. For I'll, I'll wait very impatiently. I was just gonna say that. <laughs> All right. I don't like this place. Move along. No, this a little, a little too close. It's yeah. not from here, and all this stuff is very overwhelming. But the order seems to be comforting. Too much of the law around here. I was gonna say there's a lot of military. <laughs> you might not be all for overly comfortable with all that. Yeah. This, this, you maybe got booked here a couple times, Alan Joe. <laughs> If you got the odd, the odd officer walking by, hey Joe. Yeah. Hey, back in town. <laughs> hey, yeah. <Al. laughs> running off with Tinder. So, so stuff's going on, and um, this gentleman comes back, and um, he says the uh, the seal is legitimate. I will um, I will make note of it here in the register. Um, thank you for your. Um, forbearance of my time away I uh, appreciate you uh, read taking the time to register it uh, probably saved save some time later on asking a bunch of undue questions do I um, do you wish to register your names or anything like that or just your group does your group have a name <laughs> we never thought of that. I'm sure Tinder has some opinions. <laughs> what do you I, wish I really, to be called? I really wish we shouldn't be called the heroes of standpoint because I feel like they're going to look at us weird. Huh. All right then. Um, the Dragon's Tale. How's that? <laughs> Like, wait, where's my tail? Uh, will there be anything else? And if we're, if registry is necessary and a name is needed, Alexis would probably not hesitate to give up her name. It it doesn't appear like it's all that necessary. Okay, then she would has wouldn't do it. I'm just suspicious. They want to know who we are, and in, in case they come after us. <laughs> yeah. And how many? So, but that's fine. Yeah, he's fine. Um, was there uh, anything anything else that I can uh, assist you with today? Do we know, um, and this is me asking a group, not not the character, do we know the location of Foss Gloves Villa? 
Uh, no, you do not. You don't know the, the location of Foxglove uh, Villa, and you don't know exactly what you're supposed to do with this tube of the sealed tube of papers that Amico has asked you to bring to the Arvinsor. It's kind of like when, um, I don't know, like your dad says, uh, take this down to City Hall. And you're like, what? Well, who has the paperwork? Uh, one of you guys, dude. It's a scroll tube. It's sealed up. Uh, I need and you to what, need you to go down to the city hall and register this for me. Pardon me. Well, I should ask him what we do with this because it's sealed. We don't want to break the seal. Uh, what is it? What is it regarding? It's sealed. <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, she said it was um, the papers of the um, his estate on on Jitsu, yeah. on Jiku Kaijitsu's estate. Of uh, um, the inheritance of, of his holdings. So it's, it's estate related. Yeah, estate related. Uh, for the uh, business for the kaijutsus. Correct. He yep. says, yeah, because because so. you can see the seal on the the top. It's also like to seal the thing closed. He says, I see. Uh, <laughs> I hope you uh, wore some comfortable shoes. Um, you're down near the basement. Sure. Mims looks at her feet. <laughs> Oh, we have to go down there? Okay. Well, yeah, I, I can't leave my desk for any longer than I already have. So, Unfortunately, okay. I'll give you directions, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's quite a hike. Okay, I'll take the directions, and oh. then we'll decide when we want to do that. Okay. I mean, if it's here, why don't we do it? Yeah, I thought we might do it now. If there's any downside to this, we should find out right away. <clears throat> Because that means if we don't do it now, we have to come back here. Well, he says the basement, and this is a super tall tower. 300 feet. It, it says that at least you're going down. You can um, perhaps, uh, there's another entrance to the, another exit to the lower city. Uh, you won't have to climb the stairs all the way up, but to get back up here, you might have to. Uh, okay. Well, down is easy. It's, yep, that's the, the problem. Okay. <clears throat> so. So he points you to, um, it's, uh, it's a staircase along the side of the towers. It goes through those doors, and then the stair goes down. And it's... Uh, it's outside the tower? No, it's inside it's inside. The inside the tower. Oh. And it's... it's oh, please don't, please don't do that. It's roughly 30 floors down, or uh, 15, so 20 feet of floor, so roughly 15 floors down. So it's it's considerable. You You make your way through the tower... Uh, on the outside, several times, like several, several rotations of the tower. How would you get to the bottom? Uh, it's probably about close to ten minutes of just stairs down. Can Tinder glide the whole way down? Uh, no, it's a long, um, arduous kind of follows the outside of the tower all the way. It's not like so you uh, can't just like hover all the way down. No. You'd probably be looking for a ride. Um, getting down there is not that much of a problem. Uh, it just takes a little bit of doing. Um, it's the coming back that sucks. <laughs> yeah, it's to get him back up. Somewhere around two thirds of the way down, just as you're thinking, my God, do these stairs ever end? Another doorway opens. Uh, doorway from a floor that's probably about, I don't know, 100 feet up from the bottom of this tower. And you can, there's windows that look out. You see, you can kind of get a, a rough view of the lower city uh, as you go down these stairs. It's not like everything is completely uh, sealed up. Every once in a while, you'll get a, like a window. You'll look out and you'll see where you are. So a, a young lady enters the stairwell and she starts climbing it and she looks she looks put out like like she's stressed this is how what seems to be the problem this is how she appears and as she starts climbing 
Um, she gets first, her first look at you guys is like, oh my god, who are these people? They're all in the stairs at the same time as me. And then she kind of, uh, Alexis, give me a sense motive check. Her eyes fixate on you, and she looks specifically at your uh, holy symbol. And I don't know if you have your shield on your arm, or um, the shield would be visible, and so would the tabard with all the symbolism of Sirenray on it. Yeah, she looks at you specifically and says, "Are you looking for me?" To Alexis specifically. Um, are you the one that will help us with this business? And whoever has the scroll would, or the sealed container. I, if I have it, I'll show it to her. If someone else has it, I'll point to it. What is that? What did you say? It was um, estate paperwork we have to file? Is that you're the person? Oh, oh you're, you're, you're not here for the investigation. No. What investigation? <sighs> I got my interest. I didn't do anything. <laughs> nice yeah. high heels, too. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, where? My office is just over here. I'm uh, I'm Lieutenant Cassidy. Maybe you want to... Not at all. Um, maybe you want to join me for a moment. You are here on uh, estate business, you say? Yep. I see. But this is. Do um, we know her? <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's I don't just, know. She's just randomly asking a group of people to help her, and I'm like, what? no, no. She's got um. The. Co this is. Uh, you don't know who I am at all, she says. Mim is probably has no idea. You're not. You're not looking for me. This is this this is a strangest coincidence. Knowledge nobility? Is she noble? No, she's not a noble at all. She's she's actually anything but a noble. Uh, she's got a little badge uh, that indicates that she's a lieutenant of the watch. Um, mm. Maybe kind of um, maybe like a private maybe like a detective. Um, does, she, does she have a quest marker on her head? <laughs> she does. Absolutely does. <laughs> Can I do like a knowledge history to see if men's well, we just like, arrived in, like to, <laughs> something in ticks in men's head? Because <laughs> I, I She says that um, you're not here about the um, the deaths of the um, proponents of your sect, and she's still talking to Alexis. The the Don the Don Walkers the Don Walking Murders. You're not Ooh. you're not here for that. I can be. I mean, uh, I am unaware of this inf information. We've only recently come to town today. And we we're at Sandpoint, so I don't. I haven't heard of what you're talking about. Talking about. There's. Um, she's closed. Close the door first. I'm, let me introduce myself. I'm I'm Lieutenant Cassidy of the. Uh, Magnamarian watch. I'm uh, like a junior investigator. Um, I get all your names, if that's okay. Um, now that we've met and sort of discussed this, is, do you mind if I take your names down? Alexis is not worried about it, so he's sure. Gives sure. Name. Tinder you know, pops up and announces himself. Okay. Tinder does. I just want to know if Alendro gives us a real name. No, he said no, Liam. <laughs> I caught that for sure. And you don't you don't know Lieutenant Cassidy, uh, but you have heard of her. Okay. She um she works the beat near the uh, underbridge, which you've probably spent some time at, which yeah. is where your uh, friend was murdered. Okay. Okay. You just told her the wrong name and Mims is like, wait a minute. So is Mims going to go real name? Anybody go to any other fake namers? I mean, Mims has no reason to not go real name. 
I've got a great fake name story. They just interject right here. When we were when we were young lads out picking up chicks at bars and stuff like that, we all had our own fake moniker. And uh, one of my one of my buddies always called himself Drew McLean, and we didn't think anything of it. And then um, one night one night we were drunk and we're like, "So what's what's up with Drew McLean? How'd you come up with that?" And he's like, "It's the guy from Die Hard." And I said, "Dude, that's John McLean." <laughs> that's amazing yeah, it's so fun that's a dude from Die Hard yeah no it's not so, <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> awkward brother <laughs> oh, dear yeah. Alan Drill doesn't give his name no Just everybody else gives their real name yeah. I, I'm reluctant to but I will uh, only because I'm in a big city and I don't know anybody and uh, you don't know who you can trust but she appears to be a legitimate person of the law so I will give her my real name yeah Okay. I have to wonder if she understands Tender's pronouncing himself. <clears throat> I don't think she speaks Draconic. I'd have to look up her stats. No, I, in fact, that she does be... not. I do have <laughs> her stats. stands on her desk and expands his wings. And goes, <laughs> hmm. Is there a translation for that? Uh, tender the bunny killer. I see. There'll be no killing of bunnies on my watch. Um... <laughs> And he's he muttered something and then goes back to him. He's like, he's like, okay. okay, so she um she says that um well this this investigation's kind of gotten put in my lap. Um there's the other more important so they say there's been some some cult murders. I heard that there was some trouble in Sandpoint as well. Um, I don't know the specifics. Um, you're here on business of the... But, but we took care of Sandpoint. Sandpoint is happy. The sheriff deputized us and we helped. I, I can see oh. your, uh, your livery. Yes, I see that. You are individuals who are... Um, not averse to a uh, potentially dangerous situation. She seems like she's really eyeing you guys up. Like she's looking at our our character. Correct. Sheet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> she's I. I... <laughs> yeah, if he wanted one. Um, <laughs> you know, he's showing that off. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, she says it just so happens that. Um, I might have some work for um, someone who might be able to help me let, shed some light on a situation that's been going on for the last week or so. Um, well, you mentioned the Don Flower murders. Were the victims followers of Fahrenheit? Or the four, indeed, yes, and all four um, while they're on their Don Walk. You, you know what the Don Walk is. Yeah, yes, yeah. 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 And, um, I didn't see a temple here in town for ceremony. Where do there there isn't one? Okay. Um, there's a. They're not organized. There's no. I, I I can't. It's what's make it so difficult. I can't just go to a temple and say, "Well, four followers of your temple was killed." I would. I don't have anything to go on. I'm chasing down leads that, are frankly, leading me nowhere other than. Well, let me let me start at the beginning. Um, I was um, I've been commissioned. Um, I've been able to secure a small reward. Um, I was supposed to. I was going to look for volunteers from the guard duty to try to uh, to lure out um, the killer. Um, but seems good fortune has smiled upon me for the first time since this whole thing began. And I believe you may be of some assistance. Um, As bait, right? You're two steps ahead of me. <laughs> uh, let's just start with the um, the basics. The you've never you're not locals uh, from Sandpoint, you say? <clears throat> As of late, anyway. Yeah, we've just come to arrive today from Sandpoint. The, the underbridge is a um, place under the Iron Span. It gets very little light. It's called the Shadows. 
Uh, it's where the four murders have taken place. Uh, if you want, I can show you with the murder sites later on. Um, yep, that would help, please. Yeah. The four bodies um, ritualistically murdered. Uh, Do let they me... have any kind of symbolisms on them? They do. Uh, but not do the same. <laughs> not recognize the symbol. Not. Um, she, she says not the. There is another investigation that's going on concurrent to this that dates back um, several months. Um, and those ones also have some sort of uh, cultist symbolism, uh, but they don't seem to be related. Um. She says, the city of Magnamar is no stranger to crime, even to crimes as violent as murder. Uh, brutal Sarni turf wars occasionally spill blood across the typical peaceful streets. Uh, nearly forgotten hungry things skitter amid the foundations of ancient monuments. Even, let's see here. But the latest set of murders to strike Magnamar bears a different calling card than that of um, what's been going on in the city for the last few months that has people kind of on alert. There's a new killer that stalks the city streets in the early dawn hours. Um, she says that uh, four people. That's the best time to pray. So no wonder the victims were who they were. But she said at dawn, right? Yes. Uh, each body was stabbed multiple times by a dagger and their hearts were cut out. Um, None of the missing hearts have been uh, located yet. All four were traveling worshippers of Saren Ray, but beyond that, the bodies seem to have no real connections. She says that the the uh, the bodies themselves were taken and interrogated magically using Speak with Dead, and that's revealed a few clues. Um, so all four victims seem to have been attacked from behind. Uh, all four places the victims were taking the traditional dawn walk. It's a religious observance during which a worshiper of Saren Ray walks and prays during the hours before and after sunrise. Uh, you've seen Alexis do this pretty much daily uh, when they are attacked. Uh, some of the corpses interviewed remembered noticing a sudden cessation of sound just before they were attacked. And the most recent victim caught a glimpse of the knife used to stab him. Uh, it's a dagger. Um, had his what he thought was a white feather dripped in blood. And that's that's where she's at in this investigation. And it's it's happened four days in a row. She's afraid that it might happen again. Any bite marks? No bite marks. Any evidence of disease? Uh, no, no evidence of disease. Is it all the heart? same location? Uh, no, there was four separate locations, all, but all in the underbridge, all in the shadows. Okay. So relatively close. Yes. Uh, well, it's a bit of a walk from here, but they're relatively close to one another. Uh, yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. The... Um, Any motive other than these people don't like we're followers of certain? Does not know. So there's the, Were they uh, wearing Saren Ray regalia of any sort? Or? Uh, absolutely. Clearly, uh, they were uh, of this the Don Flowers faith. So there's the underbridge there on the, and which is actually under this area here. And you guys are over here currently. You said the hearts were cut out? Hearts were cut out. Was it messy? Was it done in a rush? Was it done like surgically? Surgically. Nice. Like they took great care not to harm the heart. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, okay. Do we know of any religions that would be into steel? Like who's Serenay's enemy? Do we know? Rova Gug. I like always this? pronounce that. That's one of them. Rova Gug, Nor Gorberger. I mean, yep. all the, yep. all the big bad evils. Evil. Is there a like um, 
Who's the god of darkness? Would probably be the exact opposite of Saren Ray. God or goddess would, of darkness? Were the yeah. people that were killed all uh, poor? No, as far as she knows that they were uh, traveling priests or um, maybe even a paladin of uh, Saren Ray. Wow. Definitely devout followers of Saren Ray. Well, to be, so to, be out, to, to be an out doing a dawn walk. Yeah, yeah it's just like sure. the fact that she's on the stairs at the same time as you guys were and uh, there's clearly a follower of Saren Ray coming in her direction. She couldn't make any other assumption other than you guys were here to help her. So I detect we have bait in our group. That's what I'm getting. Yep, <laughs> but but um, you wouldn't be opposed to being bait to root out this problem and solve it. As long as she had companions with her to help any bad things that happened. She said that she was um, she had procured three thousand gold pieces to uh, give out as a reward. She, what she was what her plan was initially. Um, depending on how many um, guardsmen she could get, um, was to disguise one as a follower of Saran Ray and have him take a dawn walk and her and the other men to follow at a distance and hopefully um, get to the root of all this. But she knew it was going to be dangerous. She's not experienced in... Um, I look at the party and say, I'm willing to help here, but are you guys willing to pitch in too? Sure. Yep. Get to the bottom of this. I sure. get to hold the rod, right? When we throw you in, and then when they pull, I pull it back and reel you in, right? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> she says, I, "I'd be happy to give this over to you, and instead, the reward, yeah, three thousand gold pieces for helping me with this." What, uh, if you don't mind Sounds me, good. if you don't mind me asking, since we're putting our cards on the table, what? Uh, just here on Lanjiku Kaijitsu's business. Um, I know his estate's been abandoned for quite some time. So we found out. Um, do, do, uh, so some of the people we ran into in uh, Sandpoint were, uh, were in the part of the Foxglove family. Do you know anything about them? Foxglove, Foxglove. The name sounds familiar, but I don't really, uh, yeah, I don't, it, nothing off the top of my head, no, I don't think. Let's see. Okay, well then, we, we, we can deal with that later. Um, we have some, uh, is it you who would uh, give letters of uh, recommendation to from the sheriff in Sandpoint? Oh, you have a letter of recommendation for the sheriff of Sandpoint? I forget his yep, name. I, uh, Shawanti Man. He was here not long ago. We uh, have badges, too. Yep. <laughs> we don't need those stinking badges. They don't badges. need those stinking badges. <laughs> and they're showing off the badge of her. <laughs> yes, they're <laughs> fragrant. Mine's sandalwood. <laughs> I see that, yes. <laughs> Mine's just sandal. <laughs> it doesn't smell good. I didn't get all of the details of uh, I, I can't remember his name uh, the sheriff of um, Sandpoint I didn't get all the details of his visit he seemed um, quite put out and he left here with um, maybe a dozen men is that I've, I'd heard I didn't yeah, see he was them. having there were people being killed and he went to and they'd been goblin invasion so he went to pick up some uh, support so he could protect the town I see. <clears throat> I see. So this um, this note here saying that he had deputized... Hemlock. Yes. Hemlock. His, that's what it yep. was. I see here. He's... Um, so you're here on an investigation that has um, importance to the town of Sandpoint, I see, from what he's written. Yep. Um, you're, an inve you're investigating one Al Aldern Foxglove and the Foxglove family holdings mm -hmm. you see That's i correct i can um i could probably help you with that um i don't know okay. how, i don't know how much time we have before um well let's deal with the ear killer first i think we have a little more time with ours 
Right. Well, it's, if it's afternoon now, it's probably best to, you know, get prepared for dawn, you know, as it approaches. She says, uh, "If you want, um, maybe we can um, we can have a spot of dinner, and I can uh, I can lead you over to the underbridge and show you where the uh, unfortunate sure. occurrences took place." Yep. Sure. Yep. All right. Perfect. Well, do we want to finish going downstairs and uh, delivering the? She, yep. Here we might as well do that. Yeah. She yeah. says, "In in fact, to uh, to exit out into the lower city, to have to go downstairs anyways." I was. Oh, perfect. I was going upstairs to see if I could round some people up to assist me, but it seems like uh, good fortune has done that for me instead. So come with me. I'll show you where the office is, and um, and you can register your your paperwork. And then um, it's not far from there. Is the uh, the door? It leads out into low cleft. Sounds good. Let's do it. Okay, so you get downstairs. Um, it doesn't seem to take nearly as long now that you've got um, Lieutenant Cassidy with you. And she's got kind of um, a skip in her step as she goes down the stairs. Uh, you get probably two floors from the very bottom. And um, she calls in, into a doorway and, and calls for a person. And she doesn't hear anything. And then she shouts again, like, really forcefully and uh, basically, hey, get your ass out of here. I know you're in there. And um, a young man comes out. He's probably 18, 19 years old. And he's not in armor or doesn't have any weapons or anything like that. He looks like he might be some sort of scribe. Um, and he's uh, yes, Lieutenant Cassidy. I was, I was back. I was back in the books. She says, take this down to the... Um, Take this down to the um, uh, the archives and have it filed. He goes, oh, down there? She says, yes, do it now. So she says, give, give him over your paperwork, and he'll, uh, he'll see that that gets filed properly in the archives. And then we can, um, we can head out. Is yep. there any, or no? She has many any reason to think that that won't go well. She um she gets him to write a receipt for you. I figured it would be fine, but you know. Yeah. And he's he's got like in his little pocket, he's got like a wax stamp and stuff like that. He's it's everything is just an annoyance to him, right? Right. Well, we know that type. Yeah. <laughs> so she says make sure that this goes down and gets filed properly with the um, administrator and um she says, after you do that, you can have the rest of the day off. And that brightens him up, and he's like, okay. And she says, make sure it's done right. No fucking around this time. <laughs> okay. So you guys exit into the low cleft. It's um, it's kind of a little where you were. It was um, kind of lower upper class. And this is kind of like lower middle class. Uh, this is kind of more sort of maybe what you're accustomed to. Uh, there's eateries and shops and um, it's a little it's a little more crammed together. It's a little dingier. You know, not everything is palatial and uh, doesn't have like a big front to it or anything like that. Um, she says that on the way to um on the way to the uh underbridge if you want to stop at the uh fancy reef clock we can have a couple uh we can have a beer and some lunch and then um then we'll make our way on over to the iris man she hasn't eaten yet today so if you Tinder's don't mind very excited for food all right sounds good so the uh all. Place is called the Fancy Reef Claw. It is uh, one of Magnamar's most successful breweries. The Fancy Reef Claw is unmistakable on its street for its bright red and yellow facade, upon which is painted a huge mural of a reef claw wearing a fine town coat, a tricorn hat, and gold chains. Uh, this is the mascot for the brewery, and the appearance on the label of raspberry ale, lambics, and other fine drinks is a mark of quality among Ma Magnamar's imbibers. So they have like um, it's kind of like uh, like a brew pub, 
and it's pretty busy. Uh, you go in there and you get a seat. It looks like she's fairly well known here. Um, and the um, the owner, uh, his name is Gulliver Hawkinsworth, and he says, oh, no. Cassidy, you brought all your friends. Excellent. Uh, remember, your money's no good here. What can I get for you people today? And then she orders uh, a raspberry ale and a sandwich. I love a beer. Ale. All right. So she takes all your orders. Get you some food if you want. <clears throat> I'll get some money. It's been a long day already. <laughs> what? Uh, like some yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, she's, I'm just going to eat whatever other people are eating. So she says, um, so what's the uh, what's the news of the North? Same point. Goblin invasion? Cut off. Sorted out? Oh, yeah. Fixed it. Nice. Nice. I don't think they'll be coming back anymore. Oh, you'd be surprised. They're like um, they're like ticks. Uh, every once in a while, we'll find them down here in the sewers. Um, it's, it's amazing. They get themselves in the damnedest places. And they're always up to mischief. That's true. However, in Sandpoint, there's a f lot fewer to get into mischief. We called a bit of them back. I see. It's unusual for them to uh, to organize like that. That's what we thought. That's one of the reasons we're still looking around, see who uh, who agitated them. I see. Brings, and, and brings you us back to the uh, uh, foxgloves. I see. Yeah, so I'm not familiar with this name. Um, I've heard it. You know how you've heard a name before, but you can't quite place it. Um, <laughs> Who is this? Uh, who is this foxglove? Or who are these foxgloves? It's the name of a gang, or is it a? Um, it's a name of a family. I believe they have a residence somewhere in the uh, upper area in town. I see. Okay. Well, maybe that's why I've heard of it, but I haven't. See, I spend a lot of my time down here, um, uh, mostly uh, Dockway and um, the Underbridge and Beacons Point. Well, we, we can get into more detail of that uh, when, when we're finished with this. Oh, absolutely. We absolutely. need your help on some of it, yeah. I've kind of, kind of felt like I've been... It's you like know. you can't talk about an active investigation, right? Certainly she would know that. <laughs> oh, you can't? <laughs> Sometimes it's best to talk about it, because if you don't talk about it, then people don't know. Yeah, it's it's hard to get people to help you if you don't tell them what's going on. So that's exactly it. That's what I keep trying to tell my captain, but he doesn't listen to me. Um, it really hung me out to dry on this one. I thought I was at my wit's end. I was. I have a feeling that I will gather the proper attention you seek, and we will uncover the story. The, um, well, you look exactly like the person I was going to go and look for. How does that happen? Yeah. I, I if, if you don't I mind have, me saying though, if you don't mind me saying though, I kind of pictured like a burly guy. Oh yeah, I was gonna dress up a girly, a burly guy. You know, not not a a brave swords swordswoman. Mm. But that's yeah. in my head. You know, I don't know why I had thought that, but and then she she starts laughing. Yeah. Like this is this is crazy. So you guys finish lunch. Uh, you guys can ask her anything that you might want to ask her, or keep it to the uh, keep it to yourself for a bit. Um, These areas that we're going to in the, un the under area, I forget the name of it, but the yeah. part under the bridge, the shadows, um, the underbridge. Yeah. Is aside from these four individuals that were murdered in this ritualistic way. Are there other murders related to this that, or the victim wasn't a follower of Sarah Gray? Not related to this, but there's murders under there. Okay. It's, um, 
it's usually uh, Sarni gangs fighting uh, little turf wars and stuff like that. Uh, this kind of looks ritualistic, though. Yeah. Um, and the bodies were left with intent to be discovered, or was it? Were they kind of hidden but accidentally discovered? Or? They were always going to be found. How they were left, it was. It's kind of almost to create fear. Yeah. Okay. Like, you imagine killing a person, stripping them out of their armor, cutting out their heart, taking their heart, walking away. I assume walking away. The 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 scene itself. I'll try to paint a picture for you because there's not a whole lot left of the scene once um, once I investigate it and then we clean up afterwards. Um, so the scene itself, there's um, booted footprints uh, in blood, and then there's there's scenes like the the heart or the the blood goes for a little trail, and then it just ends, and it's all within like a ten or fifteen foot radius of the body. And one see the sunrise from this area. In fact, there were um, three areas where you could... You know what? Uh, all four, now that I think of it. All four. You can't, where you can see the sunrise. All four you can see the sunrise, yes, now that I think of it. Yeah. That would be <clears throat> the purpose of doing the dawn walk, is to observe the sunrise. And if they were, they were in an area where they couldn't see it, that would be suspicious, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's one area where it was maybe it took the sun a little bit longer. Or, I mean, I mean it, took, I, it took a little bit. I don't know. I wasn't really paying much attention. But there was they were kind of near the edge of the underbridge, except for one. One was kind of near the, uh, the shadow clock, but it was like about... A block away. As families of these individuals pressured, added to the pressure of investigating or anything. There's no families. These are tra they're travelers. Um, I don't know. In fact, I had a hard time finding out how long three of them had been in town for. Uh, one had been in town for about a month and a half. Um, that, that was the only one I was able to find anything about um, personally um, I didn't even I couldn't even find out where they were staying nobody seems to know them I mean who, who do you ask there's nobody to ask there's nobody they go from tavern to tavern hey do you know this Saren do you know this Follower of Saren Ray? No. Okay. I mean, it's just, I was chasing my tail. I don't know what to do. Do you know if they were seen in any of the taverns? Nobody recognized them at all? No, not in this section. Not in the underbridge. Had they seemed to have, uh, have been drinking or anything? Is there any indication that they were in a bar? Or no. Or where they came from? No, no. Anybody claimed their bodies? No. Given there's no temple here, is it kind of rare to see uh, priestess or... No, no, there's um, not rare, but it's not. It's not like I, I can go to the temple yeah. of Iomade and 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 ask to to see ten paladins and they'll present them to me. I, I there's no place to gather where they gather that I know of, um, and I've been asking around. I'm trying to get to the significance of the. That's the only thing that. Ties them together. Yeah. I don't know if they knew each other. I don't know if they were staying at the no, same place, fine. or I don't. I don't know anything about them. The one person I was able to find out some things about, I uh, had been here for about a month and a half and had um, taken on on work at an armor. Seemed to be a normal. Um, particularly devout member of the faith. And um, he was a, 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 a war priest. 
as far as I could tell. Um, retired over the last few months and settled here. Of the other victims, I don't know anything about really. Yeah, no problem. Well, if that's the case, you know, then we can. I guess I might as well go back to uh, uh, rest uh, and wait for the evening. What time, or wait for the morning? How early in the morning did they start? Right, just before dawn. I know it's called the dawn walk, but. Well, I, I envision that this occurring, like they would be doing their thing at sunrise. So it either occurred right at sunrise or slightly after, right? So we would need to be in position beforehand. Yep. Yeah, the uh, the dawn walk is like an hour or so before the sun rises. And then an hour after the sun rises. Damn. You imagine it probably took place in the darker part before the sun actually came yeah. up. You, um, you, she's already showed us the four locations. She'll show you that if you check out the. Um, I think you're probably still on this map here. I will move the H. Uh, so this is the area of the underbridge, and I will move it down to the uh, the little vignette down here. Uh, if you follow the line. So the first murder uh, took place up here uh, near the shore. Um, it's kind of not far from a place uh, called the Swift Dolphin Warehouse. Uh, there's not really much much left of. Uh, you can see some stains on the the ground or anything like that, but. Um, Is it worthwhile doing an investigation check or? Yeah, you can, or you can also give me a um, knowledge local. This might be uh, some place that Alandra might have some knowledge of. Okay. I'm going to do a perception just so that we can compare the different, see if there's any differences in the uh, locations. It's noticeable. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, so it was probably, it was like a little alleyway between a couple buildings. Uh, the only notable building around here the, within a stone's throw is the Swift Dolphin Warehouse. Uh, and how recent was this murder? Uh, this this one here was f uh, five days ago. Okay. This so was the very first the one. Yep. No. Yeah. That's fine. So, um, Alan Drill's... Is it in an alleyway? So the person would have been walking out. It looks like they were dragged into the alleyway. Um, it's hard to tell now. Everything's kind of been eliminated. Um, Cassidy said she couldn't tell. There was no, it was like the the person was killed like right on that spot. Like stabbed and At killed. the edge of the alleyway. Okay. Yeah. Um, they weren't, it doesn't, it doesn't look like they were trying to hide it or anything like that. Okay. No, I, I was just concerned whether or not they were actually attacked out in the open, or that they were pulled into an alleyway and killed there. It looks like probably looks like probably attacked out in the open because you're kind of in the middle of a whole bunch of little buildings and stuff like that. Alan Drill knows that um, somewhere around the Swift Dolphin Warehouse, like if you know a certain person, you you might be able to get in there and. Uh, Buy a drug called uh, Midnight Milk. Hmm. You're not really 100%. I don't know if you've ever dabbled in that kind of stuff, Alan Drill, but. That's not really my forte. Yeah, so. I know a couple of people that do. So you probably. You don't think there's any relation to this, but I. If there was any screams or anything like that in the underbridge at nighttime, people wouldn't come out to investigate for fear of getting killed themselves. Yep. Uh, there's a story of uh, the legend of the underbridge um, is the air quotes, the scarecrow, uh, some kind of uh, sadistic murder who's been killing people down here for the last hundred years or so. Um, this doesn't seem like it's related to that uh, people being beheaded and, torn apart 
by some sort of deranged maniac. This this seems like it's got some kind of ritual to it, um, based on the description. So that was the first murder. Uh, the second murder was. Um, she follows along the shore and gets to right there. Uh, and you can see these uh, um, these huge pilings of the uh, eye span. I've got a picture of those. So you can kind of see like underneath what, what you're looking at. They are immense. They are a couple hundred feet in diameter. And they're 300 feet tall. They all have different like carvings on them and stuff like that. Like little windows that uh, open up inside of them. And they, oh. they go out into the, into the ocean. Um, Cassidy tells you that it's illegal to go in there. Um, the group of adventurers went in there about 20 years ago and stirred up a, a whole nest of uh, Shirixes. And uh, ever since then, it's been illegal, illegal to, to go in there. Um, what are Shirixes, you ask? Yes. They are kind of like, um, kind of like magical spiders. And she said there was like thousands of them. Um, it was when she was... Um, an early teenager and um, there was like hordes of these things spilling out of uh, an area that a uh, group of adventurers had opened in the um, I think it was the Gull Irisband where this is close to right now there's also uh, the Harpy the Rat and the Gecko that are all that you guys have seen um, the Rat um, is near where the first murder took place. All these iron spans have names on them based on the carvings that they have on them and the carvings of the rat iron span, which is out into the water, um, have all kinds of like various rat motifs. The one near where you guys are right now is the gull. That was the one that got broken into by the adventuring band and released all the Shirixes. So this area here, um, it's kind of, if you look out over the gulf, you can kind of see where the sun would rise from this spot. Yep. Um, don't really find anything other than, once again, it looks like it was kind of, sort of in the middle of a little um, bunch of buildings. So there's maybe a bit of an angle um, where someone could maybe maybe hide and then jump out or um, maybe follow somebody f visually uh, from a distance. But beyond that, it's hard to, hard to figure out. The, uh, the third site, she walks you um, along to where the gecko iris span is. And then across, you see uh, the major landmark in... The underbridge is called the Shadow Clock. This is just like almost like a little tour. I must have spelled it incorrectly. Is there any indication that there was more than one person involved in killing? No. Here we go. The shadow clock. 300 feet, roughly 300 feet tall. Goes almost up to the, um, almost up to the iris man. Dilapidated old clock. Um, too sturdy to fall down on its own. Too large and um, dangerous to bring down. Just kind of sits up there. It's been there for eons. She walks you past. Time? Uh, no, it hasn't. Uh, I think it stopped at three o'clock. Okay. Then um, she walks you to uh, this area here, just beyond the shadow clock, and you can see almost um, 
Actually, no, the sun rises in the east, not not the west. So yep. you so your inquiry, let's see here. Because Magnamar doesn't face like this direction. Uh, you can see north is west. It's off by 90 degrees. Yeah. yeah, it is. So let me see here. So that would def Yeah, you could definitely see the sun come up from here and here and yeah. So this area, much the same as the other one, and the fourth one wasn't far away. It was right over here by the um, the Harpy Irishman. And which was the latest? That was the latest. And the one before it was the third? The third one was right uh, between the Shadow Clock and the Harpy. Okay. So they're all around this uh, Yeah, they're this. Th this, is the, this is the area. <clears throat> Whoever this killer is, this is their hunting ground. Look around. Anything suspicious? Everything's suspicious down here. There's, um... <laughs> if you weren't with Cassidy right now, you probably would have been approached for several scam purchases or um, offered to, to do some work or uh, potentially, uh, hey, would you like to come over here and see my new blah, 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 and then maybe robbed? Um, the... This is a bad. This is the worst part of town. Yeah, I want to be a pigeon. And and try someone try and rob me. Oh, I thought you were going to poop on him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You could definitely you could definitely do that. Uh, you got Cassidy with you. Like, do you want to break off from everybody and then do that? Uh, I'll tell people what I'm going to do or. The thugs down here might have seen something. Uh, if they do, they're not talking. Um, but we can... Uh, right, so, so They're not uh, talking to law enforcement, but they might talk yeah, to Yeah, I'm going to get them to attack us, and then when I almost kill them, okay, then maybe they'll they'll talk. Okay, sure. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, we don't need to play it out. Just don't scare, the, don't scare the killer off, that's all. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, let's see here. Um, so we don't have to play out any any combats or anything like that. Um, let's just assume that you're more powerful than them. Um, but yeah, you get a couple guys, and there's also some um, um, some beggars and stuff like that you can shake down afterwards. So say you guys uh, kind of quote air quotes capture. Um, several people. Let's give some diplomacy or um, intimidate checks and we'll see what we can come up with. So Alexis is probably good at playing good cop versus someone else here that might be good at playing bad cop. If you guys want to do that routine. I can be bad cop. I got no charisma. <laughs> so... If you would be so kind as to give us this information that we are investigating, that would be very, very awesome of you. We could just turn him in or beat him up and leave him in an alley. Okay, that's... We don't have to talk to him. If he doesn't want to talk to us, you know, I can... I'll cast that. Detect Thoughts. All right. So you got Detect Thoughts, and, you got uh, a... Yeah. You got Detect Thoughts, Maybe you got Diplomacy. I don't want to say, but he still gets it anyway. <laughs> Uh, if anybody has like an intimidate check or anything, um, that'll push it over the DC thirty. Does anybody have intimidate? Uh, I don't think I have it. Well, you can. That's you can roll that untrained, right? I mean, it's just, yep. you know, your score's not going to be great. But... You just try to beat a ten. Yeah. There you go. All right. <laughs> All right. By twenty is a nineteen. <laughs> okay, so you've got. Um, A couple of the locals, a couple of thugs that uh, Ratatouille lured out of uh, a tavern, they're, they're going to roll Rata, and uh, he looked like a pretty enticing target. He was flashing his flashing his coins around a little bit and pretending to be a little drunk, and um, these guys pulled out. All right, give me your purse, and then Rata just fucked them up, and uh, they're they're on the verge of needing like some serious medical attention. And um, I'm assuming Darcel will maybe come to their aid and make sure nobody has any like real 
death incidents or anything like that. Um, but we're looking at um, they they tell you that um, uh, yeah, there was uh, one of the one of the last murders uh, a couple days ago. I heard uh, I heard some scratching on uh, one of the roofs nearby, and uh, some strange flapping noises. Um, it sounded like someone was running along the roof, and it sounded like um, kind of like um, I don't know. You got a dragon there, kind of like a dragon, but not not as big, not bigger than him, but not. Not like gigantic, kind of like that kind of noise. Hoof, hoof, hoof. I heard that. I didn't see what it was. Uh, it was in the dark. Um, the other guy says, "Well, yeah, it was. Um, it wasn't a dragon. It was a demon crawling around on the rooftops." Uh, it's, I told I told you about that, and they were they go back and forth arguing whether it was a demon or a dragon. Um, was definitely uh, on the roofs and definitely flying. And then later on, uh, after you guys patch these two goons up, and Cassidy gives them a citation for uh, attempted theft and uh, a notice to appear in front of the magistrate in um, in one week's time, or else she'll come back down here and throw them in the can. Um, come upon just this old dwarven beggar and um he stinks it just he smells like he's been in his own waste for quite some time and um cassidy's like oh god no not ant beard and, and he's like i can tell you about the killer i'll tell you about the killer the flying death i'll tell you he goes through the Goes through the old, he goes through the hole, and then he he brings death. And, and I'm gonna need people to make fortitude saves if you get like close enough to him. Is we are we get drunk. <laughs> yeah, well he's. Uh, oh yeah, Ratatouille's like I can't I can't hang. His eyes start to water, and his his uh, his lunch starts coming up. I'm a mess. This this guy, this dwarf, has definitely pooped himself several times in the last week and not cleaned it up. And he just smells like urine. There's he lives up to his name Ant Beard. There's like a colony of ants crawling on his face in his beard. Um and He's he just up with him. Yeah. He says he's it's the the demon the demon of death. Ah, he uh, he flies towards the cleft, and he's got the lady in his arms, the lady of death, the lady of death in his arms. Yes, and you see them at night. See them at night flying in the skies. What does the lady look like? She looks like she's enjoying herself. <laughs> ah, as well, he, the demon carries her. She does not fly. <laughs> She'll come for you, maybe. You. Well, at least we know what to expect. <laughs> Well, thank you, Ant Beard. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, the heart that got stolen, that would be considered an object? The heart, sir. Plural. Okay. I'm going to cast Locate Object. I'll try and find a heart not attached to a person. Oh, uh, is that what it says? Let's see here. Locate well, Object. You can look it up. All right. Let's check it out. It's very off the reservation that's okay let's definitely check it out no uh solutions are uh dismissed 
You sense the direction of a well-known or clearly visualized object. You can search for general items, in which case you locate the nearest of its kind if more than one is within range. Okay, so you'd be looking at a um, discorpulated heart, a uh, removed heart. Yeah, uh, yeah, removed heart. Yeah, attempting to find a certain item requires a specific and accurate mental image, yep. Uh, if the image is not close enough to the actual object, the spell fails. Uh, you cannot specify a unique item unless you've observed it. Okay, well, um, with your interest in necromancy, um, I would say that you've probably dissected a corpse. And I don't think that would be talking out of school, Ratatouille. It's true. I'm a little out there. Uh, I'm going to... I'm going to allow it. Okay, so the range is seven, 600 feet. A circle. All right, so let's see. On the Underbridge map, what's the duration? The duration is one five minute. Minutes. Okay, so five minutes. All right. So uh, with... Can you move the H on the underbridge map? Do you, do you see where we are? Magnamar map? No. Yeah, the Magnamar map, and then there's the little underbridge vignette uh, down below. I've put the H there. Okay. Can, can are oh, you are you okay. able to move it? Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I, it doesn't move, but it. There we go. You, it, now you might be able to yeah. move it. Okay. All right. Time out. Stop right there. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. yeah. You're getting, uh, yeah. You got it. strong right here. Pull. Yeah. So. One moment, please. You mean we may not have to wait them for them to come to us. We might be able to go to them. You might just have the way to find them before <laughs> they can find you. A little home invasion. A little something really? something. No, not an invasion. We have the cops with us. So, um, here's the map. So you have, and let's uh, let's put Cassidy on the map too. NPCs. Let's have we determined what class she is, or is she like NPC class? No, she's a fighter. Okay. Um, she's probably um, a little more um, investigatory than actual like fight, fight, fight. Yeah. She didn't dump intelligence, or did she? <laughs> no, she uh, looked like she dumped uh, wisdom and charisma. Uh, she's de she, she's athletic. Um, she's got a falchion, a chain shirt, a comp longbow, and a, she's wearing a magical cloak. You guys know for sure it's a magical cloak because you guys are not shy about casting detect magic. <laughs> so she is also... On the team. Let's put her there. And let's see here. Story. So this area Looks like it was once like um, I don't know maybe uh, maybe even a church. It's hard to say. It's got the shape of like um, like it could have been. The, you see, uh, you see, 
what looks to be like a front door. And I'm going to get um, some perception checks. And then off to the side of the front door, it looks like there's the there's a fence, like an overgrown yard. And there's like a little gate that leads into it. Um, you can clearly see uh, as you get closer now, because it's in the underbridge, um, you're in the dark, basically. You've got like ambient low light. So in the middle where you guys are, where this is, uh, you'll probably have to um, do light spells or um, torches or something like that to see properly. But once you do that, you can clearly see that there's um, very faintly over the top of these the door where Ratatouille's spell is pointing. Um, it looks like the symbol of the Dawnflower. It's like an old abandoned building. The roof has fallen in. Um, all that remains is, um, this stone door and, um, about 10 or 12 feet of, uh, flagstone, um, just high enough so we can't see in. Okay. Flagstone How wall. How long is the building in this, uh, in this condition? We'll send, I'll oh, send cheese to fly around. Okay. This building has been in this condition for a while, like a long time. Uh, long before like started. years, uh, the shrine itself is in bad state, uh, bad shape. Its stone walls uh, still stand, but the wood shingled roof that once sheltered the single story building has fallen in almost completely. Uh, you can see uh, remnants of where along the sides there may have been a stained glass window. Um, yeah, cheese. Yeah. yeah, cheese can fly over, and uh, let's see here. Doesn't see anybody inside, but I'm going to get a perception check from Le Fromage. This is going to be a tough one. I think the DC is going to be high twenties at the very least. Okay, so let me. Uh, Hold so I'm, let me just check. Okay, so let's see here. Okay, so cheese flies over. Um, it's just an uh, old ruined building, um, and then a, a yard to the uh, to the right. And are these different houses? Okay. Yeah, these are the houses of the uh, the underbridge, uh, okay. just just buildings that have been there. They're currently occupied and uh, that sort of thing. Okay. okay, I wait two minutes and I tell everybody, "Do you mind if I quickly scout this place?" Oh, nope. that's good. Yeah, good. <laughs> okay, I cast invisibility and fly. Okay. I'm going to put my sniffer on. I got scent and I'm going to see who it smell. All right. Remember so, about the jingle. If that's if it becomes necessary. The bell thing. So you fly. Uh let's You've got your mini. Show me on the map where I don't have any walls or anything like that. So you can, you guys should be able to see everything. Well, since the range is 600 feet, I'll know when it is and I'll try and triangulate where it could be in here. So okay. I go to where it is. Okay. So let I'm, me. I'm smart. Oh, I yeah. Like a, Absolutely. Let me. 21. Let me point you there. 
there is a door in the back um, that looks like it leads to a set of stairs and it is in decent repair and secured looks like there's a lock there's also three graves three headstones in an overgrown yard this looks like on the inside this looks like it was once a shrine to Saren Ray, um, based on your companion's uh, symbolism, stuff like that. There's a little uh, statue to the, the dawn flower uh, up against the wall right over here. You can see there's an altar and a statue. Um, so... You got like a little section that's walled off here. Um, the stone ceiling still exists. This is still like a sealed area. And um, you're not sure about the stairs going down, but if there the is... Doors, it, the door looks locked? The door looks locked and secured. And it looks like if it goes anywhere, it must go down because there's not a lot of area. Okay. Checked um, undead. I'll scan... Scan around. All right. You. What's the range? Sixty. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Let's see here. You detect undead. Uh, you detect the power of the undead. First round. Yes. No. Second round. Number. Three. Third round. Strength and location of each. Uh, down, uh, beyond this door, uh, the same area that you're getting the hearts and strength as uh, your little chart. Right. Definitely more power than, probably more powerful than the ghouls that you've been, probably, okay. probably about the same power as the ghasts that you've been fighting. Okay, I fly to everybody. Tell them, yeah, there's a door and there's a bunch of undead downstairs with the heart. Okay. Hurry, I only got a few minutes on the spell. Okay, let's <laughs> investigate. I follow the lead. Step undead lively. In, on the grounds of a temple of Cern Ray does not line up at all. <laughs> Probably need an expert to handle the lock. Oh, that's right. Um, you can get Elendril to do that. He's uh just before we he start. Wasn't feeling we well. Look at uh, our person, the, the NPC character. We have can, permission to further examine this. Correct. Can, yeah. Oh, absolutely. absolutely yes. there too. Okay, so they give you the. Um, to an initial investigation, the shrine looks completely abandoned. The rubble within the shrine uh, building itself makes the area there in difficult terrain. But you guys can see, like, through the, the door that it was definitely a shrine to Saren Ray. Um, you can see, like, a kind of like a time-worn statue of Saren Ray. And uh, the um, kind of things have fallen in on the altar. Um, Ratatouille is kind of small enough. He's flown through. He's seen it. Um, doesn't look like there's anything in the surface uh, above ground in this temple at all. Um, yep. It seems like everything points to like this graveyard here. There's three graves, uh, three headstones, and um, then there's this locked door that seems to go and the lock door. Fresh, fresh graves. I take it there. Uh, give me some perception checks. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Rampa can. Rampa and Darcel can tell that the graves have recently been dug up and then been refilled. Um, Open the door, somebody. Yep, yep. Uh, Aladril, uh, it is a DC thirty disable check. So you start start working Smash on the door. The door somebody. Okay. You're, you're going to have to roll for him. If you look at the. Uh, oh, he text. dropped out. Yeah, okay. he said he wasn't feeling well, so he's dropped out. Okay, gotcha. All right, disable device. Round one. Round two. 
Smashing. Round smash. three. <laughs> Round four. Five. There we go. Yeah. Five rounds. That's not bad. So let's let's say it took you um, two minutes to investigate everything. So you got two and a half minutes, Rada. Okay. Door opens. Stairs go down into the earth. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Go. And now, lie down there. We. When the stair, when the doors opened, your spells go off. Like you can really detect stuff now. I know he's invisible, but is there a way to know if he's gone ahead of me? I don't know. Yep, I'm on the head as you go by. Oh, yeah, because I thought would be the idea is he's scouting ahead, so I'd want. Yeah, I'm to... I'm going ahead. Yeah. All right. And then, uh, some flying. So this is going to take me a next unless Let's... someone really pushes. Give me a second here. Shadow, uh, Time out. Time out. Time out. Is you're flying, right? So Gordon Gecko staying back. Yes. Okay. Uh, so you, this little area where I've put you, this is roughly the size of the yard. I don't know if you can. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Rada, first to go down. Uh, let's let's do one round of your movement. I'm going to uh, stealth. I'm flying, but I'm going to stealth anyway. Right. So, skills. Stealth. I don't, I don't know if this will be a good number. Probably should be in the 40s. Yep, okay. So you go. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Give me a perception check. I only smell. Right. I don't perceive nothing. Okay. Uh, you you can smell the stench of uh, rotten corpses. Okay, keep going. All right. <laughs> so I'm going to give you like filaments of pale fungus grow along the brick lined walls of this catacomb. A thick layer of mud lies on the floor. Numerous human-sized footprints running along the center while tangles of pale yellow mushrooms grow near the edges. So uh, you can basically make out the walls and you can kind of like feel and smell uh, the odor of mold, decay. Uh, you can also That's smell the, the odor of like befouled flesh. Like, like, current or just old? Uh, current and old, both. Oh, oh boy. Do, 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 do. Okay. Uh, are we going to take turns or just let him? Is there an opportunity for anyone else to enter while he's doing this? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Weapons drawn, detecting evil. Okay, so you're detecting uh, evil, probably as powerful as uh, Aldern Foxglove, maybe a little less. And you're also detecting something more, something almost overwhelming. You see... What are you using for light? Dark vision. Okay. That'll work. Um, you want me further back then? Because I haven't got dark vision, but I will have a uh, uh, ever-burning torch. To, if someone wishes to cast light on my shield, that would be fine. But she doesn't she'd go in okay. wanting to investigate beforehand. So as, as you get to this little intersection, I've given you the, uh, the description of the filaments of pale fungus, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this looks like it was a catacomb of sort. Um, some sort of area where maybe the dead were once interred. Uh, they have like the little recessed areas. There are two corpses that you see. Uh, one in the far end to the um, directional north. One to the south. In these, And they have... Um, very distinct 
Uh, the flesh of this walking corpse is rotting and putrid, its body skeletal in places, and its eye sockets glowing with red light. And it looks... So it's clearly not just a dead body. It's emanating evil. Yeah, it's yeah, it's powerful evil. Okay. But not the most powerful evil that you sense. You sense something. Bump, bump, bump. Something foul here. Something something beyond your imagination. Okay. I'm going to relay what I can it, quantify, and that is to the party members. There's mm -hmm. specific bodies down, down these hallways. And, let's, and they are not just corpses. They are active undead. We need to deal with it. Let's get some initiative checks, please. I knew that was going to be next. <laughs> yep. uh, Ratatouille, you've got a different area. I'll give you a description after. Uh, I don't okay. know what you're seeing or not seeing. Um, let me see wow. here. Uh, the I'll okay, cave directly ahead um, where the two is, like three squares to the left of the number two. Yes. Is there nothing mm -hmm. there? Is it? We can't see that far? Um... I think there we go. That's what you see. How's okay, that? So there's no, nothing. No. In that specific spot. Okay. Nothing in that specific spot. You've seen but, the one. Like if you move to there, you can see that one and the one below. Yeah. Okay. But I know of its presence because of people. Exactly. Yeah. Let okay, me get exactly. Alandro on the map, and you can also see the, the glowing red eyes. Like just as you got to that intersection, you saw, you saw what you saw. All and right. Wow. We, if it's undead, it falls under knowledge religion, right? Sure does. So I guess I want to try to identify it. I don't know. Probably not just a zombie. It's probably a little lot more. First wife. Let's Look. see. Where did... Uh... Oh, it, it's just a zombie. So is it from The Walking Dead or is it from World War Z? What kind of zombie is it? <laughs> Uh, what'd you roll? It's uh, yeah. yeah, it's a it's a powerful zombie. It's an uber zombie. Uh, uber zombie. Uh, let's the see zombie here. has class level. <laughs> okay. Alan Drill. Um, he starts to gather himself, getting ready to come down. He doesn't want to get in everybody's way. Um, Rumpa. You hate undead, right? I do. Yeah, we're gonna absolutely have fun here. <clears throat> I hope so. Rampa, uh, you know that there's uh, Alexis has pointed out two undead in the immediate vicinity. Yep, I'm ready in action. Okay, hit the first one I can that comes out. Alrighty, Mims. Um... down the stairs and wait I know better than to shift come here tender um ready to what do I have um, I guess ready to use your sling when something comes out okay Sasha. So the lighting is dim? Uh, it can be dim or you can have like light spells or whatever you want. Light uh, there's, a light, there's a light spell on uh, uh, Alex's shield. So uh, the reason I ask is if it's not bright light, then uh, there's a 20% mischance on sushi. Um, okay. Does anybody right. need... Yeah, I think Rampa's the only one that needs light light, right? It, well, who cast light on her shield? Because she can't. I don't know. It has, has to be daylight uh, for that effect not to work. Does the light on a shield ca cause that? No. no. Okay, then I'll do a light on your shield. Uh, I don't know. Forget, I, I knew the effect last time. Uh, I d I'll just drag it over. Um, I think it's concealed. There it is. I, th I think I put it on my sheet. There we go. Oh, uh, well, no, there's a conceal. 
uh, oh, to, yeah, it's um, uh, C-O-N-C. And then Total Concealment's T-C-O-N-C. Oh, there it is. See, Conceal is on. Okay. Anyway, I'm casting a Mage Armor Okay. on uh, the suit. All right, the suit. And then, it, do I know there's... I assume yeah. we know there's... All right, so 5, 10, 15. And then when she sees it, moves in. Right. And takes a bite. Actually, yeah, bite. It's a cat toy. No, it's not. Okay, we is dead. Uh, let me put um, time out. Let me put flat footed on it. And we'll try that again. That was number flat footed on that one. And we'll see if that makes a difference. Oops. Uh, it's still a miss. Okay. We drag it on it. Okay. Yeah, still a yeah. mess. All right, we're done. Rada. So you come to an area. You can see uh, the your friend's light is kind of like ended right around. What kind of vision do you have? Do you have dark vision or low light vision? I have low light vision. Okay, you got low light vision. So you can kind of see where you're, you're kind of in an area, and you can see a set of doors um, to the east. But you can also... Um, Give us a perception check as you're flying. This is a this is a, this is a high end cadre of spells you got going. Invisibility, <laughs> and, invisibility, and flight. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and you have you're detecting undead, right? Yes. Okay. So all the undead you're <laughs> detecting is back behind you. Okay. And you see a couple of, looks like maybe uh, the makings of a double door set ahead of you. Um, what would you like to do? Uh, Are you going to open said doors? Uh, I'm going I'm to try and stealthily open said doors. All right. So when you do that... You trigger a glyph of warding. Yay. All right. So is your alignment in the neutral territory or is it uh, good or evil? You can. I mean, look. You can. <laughs> I would imagine it's, it's probably chaotic. some chaotic good. All right. Excellent. All right. So we've got. So as soon as you go to open that door. A little bit. My it, eyes. It does open. These doors are not locked. Um, you can feel it kind of pull a little bit, and you're thinking you're being super stealthy, and then you're boof, like a large uh, sound, and it Ooh. and it kind of blows you back. The force of it. Uh, give me a reflex save. The DC is 15. Oh. All right. So you get to take. Eat it. Oh, Jesus. Out. Oh. <laughs> 16 points of sonic damage. Boom. And Not it, nice. And it blows you back like five feet. Okay. Uh, but the door is open. Uh, and the door kind of okay. opens up as well. And I'll give you the description. Which do uh -huh. we hear? Sonic blast? Yeah. Go, ouch. You hear the sonic blast over <laughs> him say, ouch. Oh, um, Whatever purpose this vaulted brick-lined chamber may have once served, today it is obviously the inner sanctum of some depraved cult. Unnerving, spiky rooms have been painted on the brick walls with blood, uh, between which dozens of mutilated birds, gulls, falcons, ravens, and a particularly large number of doves have been impaled. The foul stink of rotting meat emanates from, this grizzly, from these grisly trophies. Opposite the only visible entrance, a jagged boulder with a blood-stained cloth draped over it, serves as an altar. Several fly-covered, foul-smelling lumps of meat sit atop of it. The wall just beyond the altar has been painted to depict a single curved white feather um, sitting in a pool of blood. To either side of this symbol yawn archways with uh, barred doors, turning the alcoves beyond into prison cells. The east door hangs ajar. But deep shadows obscure what might be found in the other cell. 
Oh, now that the door's open, detect undead. Oh, your uh, your turn is over, my friend. You got to move, okay. and you open the door, and it blew you back five feet. So you're right there. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. Walking corpse number one, the guy you didn't detect. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. He's in range, Rampa. Yep, I got him. I've already wasted my 20. Mm. <clears throat> there I was rolling 13s and 14s and 16s and 20s, and now I'm back to 3s. Combat. I'm done. Reaches out to slam the sush. 21 is a miss. Sushi is stout. Mage armor. Buffs it heavily. Mage armor for the win. 24 is your target number, I think. That's uh, not higher. Good. So even with the flank here, you're all right. It'd be fine. Alexis. This creature moans as it reaches out its fists. And it's moving quickly. It's got like a feral kind of... Um, feral kind of approach to its attack that you easily evade. The other walking corpse. On the other side of Sushi... Does not harm it. So, anybody have uh, knowledge religion who's in this room right now? Beyond Alexis, who failed her check miserably. I wasn't a failed check. Lack of knowledge. <laughs> I fell asleep during that segment of my religious studies. <laughs> you can feel a different kind of evil, Alexis. Um, you know how the, the ghouls had their kind of um, their vibe. This one has like a like a darker negative energy connotation to it. It's like a different kind of evil. Right. All right, Alexis Nova, you are next. Well, I am going to five foot step here so that Mims doesn't get, you know, attacked. Um, and then I'm going to attack. Walking corpse uh, number one. And um, Lou, are you back in the room? So oh, when okay. I moved, it lit up the outside, which is kind of strange. So I don't think I could see outside, but that's what it did. Oh, okay. Yeah. But. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, no, you can't see outside, but it, you're underground now. Yeah. But Does that hit? That is a hit. Right, yeah, finally. Does that much slashing damage. All right. It's it, magical. I and it, it, magical. it takes full damage. Yeah, eat it. I think that's my turn. Cause, uh, yeah, I got my shield up. And everything, and everything's going. Just not, I'm fighting normally, not defensively. So. Okay. So, um, Orc Van Kaskerkin, did we get a Darsal? Did you do initiative? Are you with us, Rando? Yeah. I didn't get your I initiative. Did. I did get if you look way down at the bottom of the list, you'll see I rolled a zero. Okay, all right. Did That's... Orc join us? Yeah, Orc is here. Yeah, uh, he was gonna okay. defer to Darcel just to not get in his way. Um, so that's uh, ten. He'll move up to. He'll move up to here. Uh, he won't get to attack this round. It's like a double move to get past everybody and move up. He takes a defensive position. He's using a tower shield, right? Uh, he's using a large shield. Large shield. Okay. Yeah. So Cassidy is kind of like, ooh, you guys look like you, you know what you're doing. Um, Gordon Gecko says the Sun Dancer. I can't believe he didn't take me with him. <laughs> Sushi, Shadow Mist, Tinder, um, Darcel. Let's give you yeah. let's let's put you at one, so you're not with all the NPCs. The animals. <laughs> Those filthy animals. Promotion. I got a field promotion. How about that? Hang on. Let me move you inside. I can see now where yeah, okay. where you have to be. Let me see here. And shouldn't Sushi be attacking? Or there we go. All right. Oh, I see it. Next on. Get it on my turn. Yeah. You should, yeah, your turn. You should yep. be able to move now. Okay. I heard a rat squeal. I should. Uh, sounds <laughs> like you need help. Um. You heard a large explosion. Almost like a. 
Yeah, I heard a big kaboom and this squeaking noise. Uh, okay, so. So that's you, though. yeah, that's over. Over, I'll let me put you on the stairs. There you go. Oh, okay. Uh, they did go down the stairs. They did. All right. Well, I'll do a full move to there. You could be five feet uh, more. That's fine. Um. Don't see the rat. I see some monsters. The rat had um, the rat had vanished. He had. Uh, now, he's using magic to to hide himself. Okay. Well, we said join the pack. And already, uh, oh yeah, I got a new weapon, don't I? I have, uh, I have that um, that uh, hand axe. No, the pick. Okay, I'll hold the pick in my hand in a menacing way, and um, get ready for any onslaught that might come. Okay. Oh, while I was there, sorry. It's okay. I should, uh, who am I touching that might need? Okay, Rampa's there. I'll give them a um, a touch of good. All right, excellent. Touch away, sir. Be careful. So that's you touch. Good touch, <laughs> not bad touch. Well, you, you always seem to enjoy it, so I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. Just had to get down there. Oh, you've got Oric targeted. That's why. Oh. Oh, that was Oric. Okay. Uh, where's Rampa? He's right uh, diagonal. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. okay. Let me clear that. Target him. And touch away. All right. Excellent. So Alandro and Cassidy start to move in. They don't want to. They want to give you a little bit of room. Uh, Rampa. Yep. I believe I've got him targeted already, and I will try and hit him. It's the, it's the classic Pathfinder formation. And this one will hit him. Uh, it's actually more than that because it's on dead. This. Yep. Two more so that's points. 18. Uh, which one? That was uh... a one, I think. I had him targeted, did I not? Yes, he did. All right. I just want to know which one to add the extra two to. Okay. Yep. So it'll be 24. All right. Strikes him. Doesn't seem to phase him a whole lot. Does it do damage? Does damage. Yeah. Digs into the flesh. The flesh tears off. It doesn't scream out in oh. pain. Okay. Um, Lou, are you back? Lou. We lost Lou. Lou's going to, uh, or uh, Mims is going to, let's see here. She'll, uh, yeah. she'll shoot her sling. That's what she was trying to do anyway. See what happens here. Don't think she has. Still, it's a hit. And it does damage. Sasha. All right. Well, we see. Let's see. Is it still targeted? Let's see. Uh, Mims. Does Mims targeted. have knowledge religion? Does Sasha have knowledge religion? Um, Darcel has knowledge no. religion, I'm pretty sure. Knowledge planes. So okay. nope. Darcel, you have knowledge religion? Um I do. Alright, give me a knowledge religion roll well. Sushi and Sasha tear this creature to bits. Nope, not dead yet. <laughs> it's not dead yet. 
Oh, minimum. There we go. That's enough to do it. (laughs) All right. And I'm not going to fire acid through all my compatriots. That'll be it. Darcel, you know these creatures to be white. Creatures with a powerful negative energy attack. Ratatouille. Yeah, I'm dead. I'm dead in here? No. 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 What you see, though... Actually, what you smell is not the foul putrescent of the unliving. What you smell... Uh, give me a knowledge planes check. Okay. Oh, I can do that. Smell the unmistakable odor of brimstone. Did you say knowledge planes? Oh, not oh, not, that's, not that's for ratatouille. you. Uh, that's sorry, ratatouille. Sorry. Yeah, yep. ratatouille. Oh, he's, sorry, he's in a different place. He's in a different place. The (laughs) unmistakable odor of brimstone. Notice that is the... um, It's the calling card of a creature of the um, lower outer planes. Either a a demon, a devil, a daemon, a clip-off. Something. Something foul is down here. Ratatouille is soloing the boss while the rest of us are doing this. (laughs) What would you like to do? I'm going to... Sneaky, sneaky, and I'm going to smell. Oh, that's plus 20, so 56. Okay, got it. Noted. Anything exciting yet? You... Here... A whisper. He made me a um, knowledge arcana check, and the DC is twenty-five. Okay, you um, definitely know it's some sort of conjuration, transportation kind of magic, uh, either dimension door or teleport greater teleport and within an instant you can feel the air move and kind of the odor of brimstone kind of fades with it oh somebody left But you could definitely hear it was the voice was a female. And it what what are your languages? Uh, I mean, I'll just look for you and see if you. A conic. No, <laughs> nothing, nothing you recognize. Uh, knowledge planes, though. You have okay. that correct. Yeah. All right. Um, definitely. Something from the lower outer planes. One of those languages. You don't know which one. But it's definitely... And you kind of felt a burst of power. Like a burst of power that made your hair stand up. And gone. Oh, boy. Okay. So, okay, I done. All right. Alexis Nova. Defend yourself. We'll see what happens. Actually, probably try to attack Sushi because uh, Sushi's going to rip him to shreds. And this is love it. The other one is Oric Van Kaskerkin. Are you ready for a negative level, Oric? Oh, how about two? Okay, just one. Okay. You're supposed to say, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Oric Van Kaskerkin <laughs> gets an NLVL. That doesn't count as a disease, does it? No, it counts as a minus one on pretty th- pretty much everything, though. All right. 
All right, uh, Alexis. I want to attack the wounded one. Just do all for whatever. Okay, so the wounded one is um, the one right one. in front of you. <gasps> Same one yep. I attacked before. I should still have it targeted. Yep. Yes, okay. Take that. That is a hit. hit. Well, minor damage, but it's better than zero damage. Still up. Still up. Oh. Orc, finish this one. I can't. I've got to make sure that my effect is right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I gotta hit the button. I... Let's go. Gotcha. All right, Orc. You say I can't go. It's not my turn. Can't go. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for Alexis to pass her turn. All right, swings his plus one bastard sword at the. Plus eight should be, uh, what is it, plus nine? Yes, the effect took effect. Excellent. He says, I feel lessened. Cassidy, uh, from the outside. Last one in. Ooh, no perception check. This is going to be bad for her. All right. Darcel. <clears throat> Still in the back row there, but I'll um, I'll touch Rampa again. And I'll hold my trusty weapon in my hand and wait for something more to happen. All right. Gordon, Sundancer, Sushi, Shadow Mist, Tinder. Alan Drill. Alan Drill, from his position, hears a shout from the outside. As. Bum, 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 bum. Something swoops down on Cassidy. From the outside, from the roof, as it watched you enter. Oh. <clears throat> Swoops down with a bite. Let me put flat footed on her because it, it locks us in and we all die. That's right. That's my that's my hallmark. If it swoops down, does it not provoke? She is she didn't detect it. No, to me. What? No, this is, is outside. This oh, it's is, outside. This it's is not in, it's outside. Okay. You don't see what's uh, happening. Only no, I Alan said something came down inside. Okay. He probably has flyby attack too. Would be my guess. Yeah, it doesn't prevent it from the uh, from AOs from other people, just from the one, just from its target. And let's see here. It is. And it lands. And Alan Drills can clearly see it at the door. He made it back up as he heard Cassidy shout. Rampa. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. You missed, didn't you? All right, let me go back here. Yeah, Orc, Orc missed. That's a hit. Or 17. That'll do that one in. Uh, let's see here. One walking corpse left. 5, 10, 15. Yeah, Al oh, Alan yeah. just shouts, there's something outside! Yep. So I was here. Make sure you get that movement right. 5, uh, uh, 15, 25. Okay, it's as far as I can move. Okay. Upstairs is double movement, right? Yeah. All right. So. Oh, sorry. That's fine. You can be there. That's that's cool. No, no, I, I hadn't clicked that I was done. Oh, okay. So can I give Oric 
Orc's kind of locked in here. Uh, give him a perception check. I'll kill the third one. We got two of them down. Kill the third one. And I'm going to get um, someone to roll percentage dice. I'll take the first one that comes out. And you want a number below 50. No, because, <laughs> because if the number is above 50, oh, 12. I thought that was 92. If the number yeah. was above 50, the summoning of the demon would have been successful. Okay, but. Well, I'm good for low dies. <laughs> In a shadowy mist down the hall. Alexis, your your undead, your your detect evil, just goes off. Like more evil, in its way. Like you didn't think things could be this evil, and um, you can kind of hear detect evil broken. <laughs> you can kind of hear the um, the words of um, like magic being spoken, and she becomes visible and. This is what you see. Mm. And we'll see you next week. <laughs> Middle of combat. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, 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 bum. Just a heads up. I'm going to be out all week next week. Uh, so I won't be in either second. Okay. So, feel yeah. free to throw sushi into the front of the crowd and uh, do what you need to do in the other one. Uh, well, but well, I'll be back to week after. Okay, excellent. So, okay. just one quick question. Yes, did she? She has appeared behind the uh, the last of the guests who were there. If you remember where the yep. number two was, was it's yep. right by. The I'll just put it right there. But she, just so you can see her. Yep, and then uh, she's right there. Oh, I just, actually. I just have to. There you go. Yeah, remember, I'm up the stairs. Yes, you're definitely up the stairs. That's why. That's why I couldn't see. <laughs> okay. There's something else going on outside, and I'll show you. I'll just give you a sneak preview of what's going on outside. Sure. Bum 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 bum. Mm. Oh dear. Somebody's cat got loose. Right. Is that Alandril jumping on the back of that creature? That that is, and that's that's Cassidy trying to defend herself down below. She's aged. <laughs> Cass Cassidy has a beard. What? <laughs> no, I said that's Cassidy trying to stab him in the back, and that's Alandril. Alandril's aged. <laughs> All this adventuring has put years <laughs> on him. It probably will. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Good game, and I'll uh, we'll see you next week. Yep. And in two weeks, okay. yes. Yeah. And with any luck, we'll survive. It's all good. Yeah. All right. Good job, guys. Yep. Take care.